All right, Jay Hood. How's it going? Man, going good, my boy. How you doing? Oh, uh, man, good. Good, man. Just glad to have you back. Man, glad to be back. Glad to be back, man. Talk about some interesting things, man. Definitely, you know, shed a little bit of enlightenment, man. That's what we be doing. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, I thought we'd just get right into it, man. Uh, the biggest news since our last interview, you know, was the King Von headlines that was made last week where it's alleged that he put a 100K bounty on FBG Duck, man. You know, what did you think when everybody first got arrested for it about a year and a half ago? <clears throat> man, I'll be honest with you, Cam. In my, mind, in my state of mind then... I, I was just thinking pretty much like, you know, how they, the name that that, that kind of got attached to him, Sloppy Five. I thought it all was pretty much, one, obviously we know I'm not, I don't, I'm not a, a one who wants to glorify murder or anything like that. But when we just look up at everything they did in which after that, you know, everything that transpired after, you know, FBG Duck died, Look at everything they did, it was all sloppy. It was just all like them kind of throwing subliminals. So pretty much I was just confused. But when when all of them got locked up, it kind of made more sense as to, you know, like what I've been seeing, you know, them doing in the, in the music or, you know, pretty much just on uh, social media. But man, it, it was just pretty much like, cause you know, I gotta, I, I, I talk to who I talk to. And so I kind of already knew a little bit about it, you know, not trying to say a lot without saying a lot, but I already knew, you know, about the whole money on Duckhead. Like, that's kind of a given, you know, and not just him, but it was pretty much money on a, and I don't, I'm not saying I know exactly who is putting the money out there, but when you think about who we talking about, FBG Duck, like, he was, again, like, top. This is somebody who... I was on the top, you feel me, to, you know, wanted list in terms of being in tour with O-Block, being like arch enemies or whatever you want to call it. This is somebody who started the rapping, who known globally for this and have, have him, you know, just people pretty much buy into the whole war thing that was going on. You know how people picking sides from the internet. And so Duck played a heavy influence from that realm, you know, just getting those who might, you know, I feel like a lot of dudes that might claim gangster disciple because that's what Ducknam was. They were they were GDs, they was gangsters. And I feel like more people who were gangster, they lean more closer to them because they felt like that's what they, you know, was supposed to do. So I felt like he was able to, you know, bring in that type of, uh, uh, um, you know, fan base, those who were of, of you know, gangster disciple disciple whoever ran with that game or whatnot but <clears throat> again i was just i'm just saying that to say that he was somebody in high in value as to what would hurt the other side i feel like they love names like that that people love like and not only just on their blocks but worldwide like you feel me and that's kind of how it was in the beginning with like od dine um Sherrod, uh, White White, like these were people who had major time. Everybody on the block, you know, that they basically like hood famous. Everybody in the city know them. And that's pretty much what the, were the names that people was trying to knock off. They was trying to knock off the tops of the top. So pretty much with that, it's, it's kind of like it makes sense when you think about it. It just makes sense that they will have money out once they start getting money, that they will put money out on somebody that would look that as that, you know, top tier most wanted on your most wanted list from whatever, you know, how that go. But yeah, crazy still how it all fell down with just like Los, man, I know the, I know them. <clears throat> I used to, you know, be punching Lil Muwap, Mark, Lil Mark, as he running telling his mama, you know, just, just so many stories I got with just them in this own individual with each one of them individually is just like to see where we have gotten to and this time is just, you know, the blind following the blind, man, and, and and look what happens. If the blind leads the blind, a dish they shall go, bro. And you know, we really just got uh I look at it as the the ones who 
are older than us who's supposed to teach us the things that what not to do. But when you swallowed up in it yourself, you know, n niggas kind of get jealous. They don't really want nobody to get a greater life than what they got. And if I'm here and I'm suffering, then I'm going to bring you into the loop. And nigga, you ain't going. It's just like ugly and evil don't want anything else to prosper. And so we think that they love us, but whole time they bringing us into a fold where we won't never be able to receive the greater things in life, the family, the wife all this thing so you know i'm kind of bringing that all into the fold just to say that we only get to these points because i know the muap i know carlos i know you know major all of, all everyone that got locked up for this i know them in their own individuality and to see again where we are right now man it hurt it hurt to see you know what happened to duck as well but you know that's the life that we living right now that's the life that they living and the news broke a couple weeks ago about, you know, King Vaughn, uh, you know, putting the money on Duck. And then it actually made the front news of the newspaper last Sunday. You know, and you mentioned that you kind of already uh, heard something. So, so it, you know, I, I mean, on the Internet, too, man, you know, if you kind of paid attention to the drill move movement, you kind of heard these rumors, you seen them, yeah. you know, but it was kind of, you know, confirming when, when you seen it, you actually seen the paperwork to it. Yeah. You know, you, it was kind of like backed up by, I don't even want to say facts because it wasn't really, you know, this isn't. Self snitching, man. You know what it is. Self snitching. If it's coming out in a, a it is the facts. You feel me? Because Nick. You only make music because most of it is music or whether they talking on, on the internet or whether, you know, just like how Muwap had the whole, the, with the with the particular shoe he had and on there it was duck with a camera flash. You feel me? And it's just like, and not only just the shoe, but when you take a picture and you go deeper into the symbolism and you pinpointing this out with some lyrics behind it. Nobody is dumb. The only people is dumb is the ones that think that they gonna be able to do this and people ain't able to catch on. But you know, they want you to catch on when you think about it. But people just think because it's not outright snitching that it can't go against you know, uh, you know, a uh, work against you in a court of law. And they can, like, clearly it is. And many people, man, a lot of people got eyes to see. You feel me? And I ain't talking about the spiritual ones, but the physical ones where you just can see when people are, are mocking somebody death. It's like, it's kind of over easy to see that, you know, if that's pretty much what you was kind of alluding to. Two months before they were arrested, around two months, FBG Duck's mom came out and said that the feds were involved and there would be some arrests. And then, I don't know, around two, three months later is when the arrest came out. Now, after the news broke about Avon being involved, she came out and said that there would be more arrests being made for the murder of her son. You know, what's your reaction to that? So you saying that it's going to be more people getting arrested <clears throat> outside of the ones that's already arrested? That's uh, what she says. I mean, I mean, it may, it would not saying that it would make sense, but I, and then you got to look at, um, you know, just to know about the court of law. If they are going to arrest anybody who had prior knowledge to what was going to go on before it transpired, anyone who could have basically stopped it from happening, then that would make sense. But I think from the way in which she's talking about it is that um, the string, you know, the it might attach to people who you know, just was behind the scenes, kind of like Vaughn was, who maybe he was texting and behind the scenes with somebody that that, that, that could come out and maybe, you know, they could get arrested too. But I'm, I'm just kind of really just trying to piece something together that, that would make sense. If you got the people that did it and then you got the, and Vaughn's pretty much dead and he was the one who was supposed to pay for it, who else would you need, would you need you know, to really go down? Is it just anybody who had prior knowledge of the case? And I mean, I would feel like that that's really just, you know, um, well, that could, could be a be lot the, of people. There could be the person who gave him the location. 
the low cat. Oh, well, that's definitely that's a uh, that's a good um, that's a good answer. But um, I, I thought that maybe the person that gave up the location was um, you know, uh, maybe in that whole group too. But if they wasn't, if, and, and all them like it just seemed weird because I, I forget how many of them was four or five of them. And like for all them to even be at the crime scene together, well, I know they locked Los up because Los actually put the car in his name, and then he tried to take the car back and whatever that situation was. So I believe that's what put got him locked up because he let them use their car. And the, I think the other who else the other guys was just there. I don't know, man. All I know is that it's uh, uh it's a that's a lot. And then I mean, if they got the knowledge, if they not the knowledge, but if they got the evidence, what they waiting for then? Cause I know I'm free. I'm I'm sure everybody pretty much want to see who it is that gave up the location, so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they really came down hard on this case, man. It was, you know, it was it was for me. It was surprising anyway to see the FBI involved because, you know, I you know normally when I think of like the FBI getting involved, I think of like, you know, big time mafia money, millions of dollars and type of situations going down you know this just seems like some normal street activity that the cops would be more involved in you know but it's bigger than crazy. that man cam you know you know you gotta know it's damn sure fbi worthy i mean you got um people in africa all over the world that's pretty much involved this it's pretty much a multi-billion, not billion, but million. I don't know whether to call it million, but I feel like due to all that, so you can't say million, cause that drill, the drill culture in itself has produced million dollars to the ones who produce drill music. And through all the drill music, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of death over this genre of music. So it just really take me back to um, when the cops used to always flood the block every time Keith was on the block. And they treated him as if he was, you know, one of the mob because they knew what he symbolized, what that person and that. And that's true. It could be like that for a lot of things. What he was was bigger than what we could perceive it as knowing him. But he was something way bigger. And with the police, what they look at this stuff, they see these people as death. That, you know, if they are thinking about it in a righteous way, they see that not only this music um, is creating deaths, but, you know, the, the kids that look up to this music, they are, uh, you know, being tricked and thinking that this is what they look like. This is how they supposed to act like. But because we seeing people get getting rich off the genre of music, it's creating like a a a, a weird, you know, just a you know. I can't even really break it down. But isn't it weird how they can pay somebody for drill music, but the music is about black death. So it's like they promote in black death, but if you go and commit a crime such as killing another person, you will get locked up. So it's kind of like, do y'all want them promoting this just so the jail cell? And it just kind of seems like, you know, what we always been talking about, the, the um, not just the desensitization uh, of the black man, but just how there is a war on Black man, period, and we really not black. We're Judah, but you know that's a story for another day. But it just can't, it's just kind of confusing how they paying all this money to these rappers, but we we want love, we want peace, we want prosperity. But you know, back to going back to the initial. Yeah, it, it is federal FBI. I feel like it's worthy of the FBI just because what it's doing, not only in the United States, but globally. I heard like people reach out to me on my podcast and they say, man, y'all music done got here. And because the music done got all the way over here, we in England and, and the stab rate has gone up from them listening to Chief Keith for Lil Dirt. It's like black people all over the world are being able to identify with this music, but identifying with this music only turns us against each other. And it gotta be, it seemed like a curse thing to me, and I know it's a curse thing, but you know, I'm just trying not to go too deep without going too deep, because I know people don't truly understand the spiritual curses. That's the reason why we are operating in the way we operate in today. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot going on. 
since our last interview, King Yellow did an interview with Say Cheese. And in this interview, they talked about King Vaughn. And one of the line, one of the things that he said was that he said King Vaughn was the devil and that he was crazy. You know, what do you think when you hear that? Man, I think, one, if Vaughn was the devil, then that pretty much makes anybody of... On their side, all devils, anybody that ever came from my side would all have to be devils as well because they all did the same thing. They rap, they do the same thing. They pretty much trying to, you know, so like if what's what's the, what would I would ask Ken Yeller, <clears throat> why would you say Vaughn in his own? I like because are you were you faking the whole big guy, tough guy drill thing? And if you was faking it. What would be the reason to, and if you faked it about that, and what else would you fake it? Cause most times they was faking with the with the rap, and I get it, maybe to move up and to change, but like you could just see a uh, unauthentic. You know, when I was doing what I was doing, game bang, and I was doing it lost, yes, but I did it authentically. So when I grew in knowledge and I understood, like man, this is the what the world wants us to do. They want us to battle with each other. Like yeah, they they three fifths. When they said that black people was three fifths of a human, they never changed that. It was just still the same. They just had us target each other. They found out ways in which how to implement certain schemes and to come on, we in the hood. And if we stay in the hood, we stay in poverty, then you have to know that niggas is already living like the battle of the fittest. You feel me? Living like they in, 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 the, um, in the wilderness because that's what it feel like. It ain't no hope. It ain't no, uh, it ain't no hope in the schooling systems. Like, if we, if any majority of us would have went to um, an actual school outside of the Chicago public school area, we would have all probably flunked, wouldn't have been able to keep par, just because, not only because of the, the algorithm that, you know, the, the curriculum that they was teaching us, but because how we behave, you know, just the, 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 the you know, mind control started with experiments, putting black people in hoods and taking everything out and seeing how they would operate. And they saw that when you did that, we was more angry towards each other. What do they say about people who are frustrated and they hurt? They take out every, all those emotions on those closer to them. So when I don't got nothing, but you got a little bit, I'ma take it from you, cause I don't got much. If I'm up and, 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 and um, you down, and the person that's down gonna wanna, you feel me, take from the one that's up, because it's just like, they put us in positions where they knew because they, you know, the people who really, you know, understand what's going on, they got a higher understanding. And they are the ones who facilitate pretty much the agendas, not only the agendas, but what they, you know, what pretty much how they organize the world in which that black people live in, like the cities. They know everything that, um, that they, that could help, you know, us better our circumstances and actually elevate in our minds and not, you know, pretty much looking at each other as bait and as food. And they know what they could have done, which they did do, was do the gentrification thing. Put them in there and take out all of the hope in which they can get in the schools and things like that. And then you get environments like this, you feel me, pretty much where we don't know who we are. We battling each other. We hate each other. And again, it just goes back to we were never, and you know, we're, we never was, uh, you know, supposed to come here to be a, um, a regular citizen. We were supposed to be what we were, slaves, and to do what we did. And it was a curse that many people don't know much about the cursing, you know. So, but that's, you know, I'm trying not to go too deep, but it is deep. All that's what's going on right now is deeper than just. The old block topics, man, it's so deep that we need to learn why is this being okay? Why is old block even globally known? Why? How? You know, like that's some of the questions we really need to be thinking about to ourselves. Like, man, there's no other race of people who could be doing what we are doing, talking about what we are talking about, getting the, notif the notoriety that it is getting. And it be okay, it's all death, but only because of who we are, and we don't know who we are, are we able to be in trick like this? It's crazy, but 
That's what I say about that. Back to the King Vaughn part. Do you think he would have took what King Yella said as a compliment? If he was alive, I think, yeah, he would take that as a compliment because we play around with things like that, that we truly don't understand the language. We truly don't know what we saying, what we saying. And, you know, what dwell into Vaughn, I would say, was definitely um, demons for sure because he, you know, when he turned on that switch, he turned it on, man, and, and it's evil regardless. It's all evil, but I would say that we all, you know, are pretty much one and the same when it comes to it because everybody was doing the same thing. And I know I did kind of go on the whole, you know, a whole whim. But yeah, I would say that it's all like they all pretty much did the same thing. So what separates uh, FBG and they people and the rappers in their group versus Vaughn? And I, I get it that he actually took lives, but some of they people took lives or they attempted to take lives, whether they are locked up or not. But they were doing the same exact thing. So it's just kind of like he just saying something basically for views and for clicks because that's what niggas do. They, they ungenuine, man. Yella is ungenuine. All, I feel like truthfully everything that he's doing is just for the money. That's just like how Nick, they start, they become rappers because they looking for a way out. And they don't even know that the way that they are, 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 are trying to get out, they still hurting people. Because if you're not giving people true substance to actually uh, empower their mind, and the only thing that could power any man's mind in this evil world, which is ran by Satan, this is his kingdom, is... Yahushua HaMashiach, which is Jesus Christ. That's the facts. So anything outside of that is vain. And that's all they do is just vain work. But again, since we don't know what the world is we live in, we don't know that we don't fight uh, flesh and blood. We fight principalities, rulers and wicked and special in high places, evil in high places. Then we going to forever keep fighting what we see is each other. And we going to forever keep being devoured into that, that fight as well. But... You know, people don't want the knowledge, they don't seek it, they want the world, so that's what they talk about. And that's what they understand, that's what they know. 50 Cent put together a big production, TV series called Hip Hop Homicides. And during this series, you know, he went over the murders of Duck, Vaughn, Pop Smoke, Mo3, a couple other dudes, man. Did you have a chance to check it out? Yeah, I seen like the little, uh, I guess what they, what the introductory thing to all of it and how they going to have it all out. I seen it and I feel like a few people, I think it was like at a concert or something like that where they were kind of just like showing, you know, pretty much what they had in the works. And I seen it and it just bring me to truthfully, man, 50 Cent is, is, is somebody that because we see him look like us, we saw everything that he's been through. We can't see how he like he's just helping the masses exploit black death. And we glorifying it. We we treating our deaths as a source of entertainment. These niggas got all this money, they got all this knowledge to make uh productions like this possible and i want to ask 50 cent and everybody who appreciate the work what is this work doing is are y'all continue people don't understand they steady trying to put it in front of our faces so that we can be um uh, um so divulged into this that we don't see how this is this the very thing that's killing us our attention not our attention but our even our want to watch something that is about our death we looking and we are literally entertained. And we, you know, myself, because there's other shows like Snowfall. Uh, he already got the other shows, all the power shows and all of it, man. When you look at it, it's, it's poisonous to, to anybody seeking truth. It's just like, how can we get to any point of truth in the world when we got people that look like us and that, you know, we we searching to get out of the hood and we don't got no leaders, no leaders. Everybody pretty much, everybody pretty much, you know, are, are puppets. That's how I look at 50 Cent. He's a puppet, you know, and because what, what, what are they learning from, you know, 
them about to do this. The only thing that's gonna come about it, people re-listening to things that you done already talked about on your stream. Fuchs done already talked about on his stream. All this stuff is already pretty much globally known. All the King Von stories, all the FBG Doug stories, it's all out on YouTube with millions and millions of views. So I feel like it's pointless for them to even create another production that goes over this stuff really in with what are they gonna use? The YouTube videos for the true knowledge? If y'all don't even got the people that's a part of this stuff telling y'all the truths about it, and so basically they just using all the YouTube facts to create a production that they don't even know is really in truth or not. Like, so it just seemed like a, 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 um, a weird plot to continue to just Make it seem like, you know, and, and our people don't have no knowledge to, to even know what good even look like. It's confusing to me, Cam. That's what I say. And me being who I am, I'm just tired of seeing stuff like that being glorified. Why do we need more black shows, black exploitation shows? Nigga, this not helping nobody. I just want to know who learning from this and who's actually living a better life from this. But who is hurting from this? Everybody. Because everybody is entertained by it. Satan getting us all to agree with death or to want to see something about death, to be entertained by death to some fashion. And everybody has a stake into just okaying what's being, you know, what he's sending out to okay. And because they sending it out in forms of, you know, idols like 50 Cent rappers who a lot of us looked up to. Myself as a kid used to look up to this nigga. He literally was the reason why a lot of us started running around with the gangster image, running around. But when, when he, when they show 50 Cent, what they do to him, they black exploitation to him show him going against those who he grew up with that look just like him all it is is a, a, a kill another man man desensitizing that uh when you see black death not to think too deep about it it's it's, it's normal and that's all it is they just making our death seem normal and they monetizing off of people hurt and pain and no i don't appreciate it because these is people that i grew up with and that i love and it kind of angers me for real one of the people who did an interview for Hip Hop Homicides was Asian Doll. Did you ever see Vaughn and Asian Doll together? Or, you know, what'd you think about that whole situation? Like that right there just shows you it ain't gonna be nothing authentic about um, this production. It's gonna be pretty much them creating a narrative and putting it out that they want to be out because they know what they gonna put out gonna sell but it ain't gonna it's gonna be the furthest thing from the truth but you got people like me who out here putting out real truth asian doll shouldn't set foot near no uh camera to talk about no war between king von and fbg duck she don't know nothing about that this stuff happened way before Vaughn even, you know, met her. She, man, the niggas don't show they females, niggas like Vaughn and niggas who run in the streets. They don't show women like, you know, that the, uh, like, especially like Cuck. He ain't even really love her. He didn't even, that whole, them being together, I haven't seen them together personally, but when Vaughn came down here to Phoenix, Arizona, and they had a few concerts, me seeing him and then knowing her, knowing the backlash that Sosa and she done pretty much been ran through, forgive me for saying that, but it's the truth. I asked him, like, I know for a fact you not really, you know, like, you really, like, you an Asian dog? No, he literally told me specifically did some, some industry shit. Other words, this was some industry shit. They put them two to two together in order to, you know, for the fans. He said that that stuff was for the fans. And people got to understand that that's what they do. That's why they, they put a black rapper together with a female, two female artists. And, and, you know, because they want us to look at them and be like, goals, goals, this, goals, that. But, man, <clears throat> she should have no... Um, no, no, she got no place being in front of no cameras to talk about something that she wasn't a part of. That makes no sense. But because she had a little, she dated Vaughn and they did the whole little fame game thing that people think that, you know, she has a valid voice and the speaking on this man's life. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's pretty, that's, that's, that's ludicrous to me. I'm not gonna lie. And it, and it really angers me because 
this is my this is my brother. You feel me? It's not many people who gonna come out and speak on straight truth or authentic, genuine truth. Cause everybody got motives, so they they let things be said, and because they don't want to cause controversy. But I ain't got no motives in this. I ain't got no nothing that I want out of it. I'm just here to speak the whole truth, niggas. Family. I just saw his family, and everybody. They, you know, niggas is, you know, people just they rooted in lies, man. And it's only to monetize, but. Again, back to it. The, the 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 main the main question. It's weird. Asian dog don't got no no place of being nowhere on no interview like that. Documentary, whatever. You know, a after he passed away, she would always call herself Queen Vaughn. You know, did that bother you? You know, seeing that? Yeah, it bothered me because you ain't no Queen Vaughn. Like you knew just as well as Vaughn knew that y'all relationship wasn't authentic. It wasn't genuine. And so if y'all relate, come on, we all know this. I know him. This nigga was a player from the Himalayas. He, for sure, like Ruby, If and I think Ruby did have one of his kids. Like Ruby is somebody that we all knew. Like Vaughn loved her, you know, like really, really loved. And there was another girl who I can't um, remember her name, but like, you know, Vaughn's friends knew who he really loved. Like, the people who really knew Vaughn knew who he really loved, and every last one of them, if they be truthful, they'll tell you that that right there was all fake. I know him. That right there was fake. And But, you know, a nigga from the hood, all of us, we would like to have, you know, somebody that's rich, you know? Like, it's just a, 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 a stunting trophy. A nigga just get it to stunt. She was signed by Gucci. It looked good for him to have somebody like her. But in reality, it wasn't no love rooted in that. And yeah, it angered me again, though, because, you know, it just wasn't genuine. If it was genuine, I ain't going to hate on it because I would have felt the genuine. I would have wanted my boy to have somebody that really loved him and that he really loved. Like, what do I get out of him loving her? But I don't like the, I don't like the, unauth you know, the unauthentic. I hate the lies, I, especially about somebody that I know he ain't here to speak up for himself, man. I don't like it. I don't really like it. If he was here and he want to go along with the lies, cool, 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 or whatnot, that's him. But now that he's not here, man, it's just like only his true friends, you know, that really got no agenda, voices should be validated. Niggas that got agendas trying to get rich and do all this, then they gonna pretty much say what, what y'all want them to say, what people want them to say. But me, I'm gonna give you the utmost truth because that's what I'm here to do. You mentioned Chief Keef. What happened with Chief Keef? Uh, what, 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 oh, 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 you talking about with the a nigga Asian doll and uh, I can't even remember the other, I think Blasian doll and Asian doll. Blasian doll is one of those, you know how you get the social media famous people and they be famous pretty much for just sending, they just be lust, you know, uh, lust, lust, I don't even, I would say, I don't even want to, you know, call, you know, name calling or nothing like that, but you know, you know what the uh, the IG models and stuff like that is. But yeah, Sosa and them ran through Asian Doll and them when he first got on. So that's probably pretty much everybody already knew she was ran through. Like, you know, pretty much just that. It wasn't nothing deep, but, you know, niggas just, they had names when Sosa got on, you know, and they had, you know, some relations. I thought we'd take it back a little bit, man. And, and you know, there's some few stories out there that I'd, uh, I'd like to hear about a little bit, man, you know. I believe there were some stories you had with Jay Money and some uh, situations where some guys pulled up on you guys or, no. or kind of came came at you uh, when you guys were on the block. Oh, boy. <laughs> she just put me back in. Oh, like, cause you know, I ain't going to lie. I, before I changed my life around through God, like, I used to be out there. And I, I wasn't going to school. And, all we, you know, I used to have a lot of guns at my house. You know, I used to because I had totes. When my clothes would be in the front closet and tote, so I used to just have a lot of guns, you know, just and I stayed in the second part, you know, pretty much right there on 64th. But yeah, the, the, the story you talking about, it was me, J Money, um, it was TP, it was uh, Cloddy. Cloddy was a little short dude who I, I made a story about him and Boss Top fighting on my page and whatnot, and people thought that was funny. But yeah, so Cloddy, me, TP, J Money. And um, it was just like Jay Money was weird, fool. Like when he used to get off pills and stuff like that, he used to just be over like exuberant with toughness. Like the nigga was over tough, and you know, really just being quite quite honest. Like I gave, like he had a gun already, but the gun I had, he wanted. He bro, let me get your. And the nigga was just in the hallway sleep. He was in the hallway sleep, and my hallway was me, him, and we was all out on the um 
on the porch really just hanging out, me, TP, and Claudia. We felt like we was cool because Claudia had a gun too. And we was really just out there on AA. Hey, hey, this is really just watch. You know, we just out there watching. So if any ops slide, obviously y'all know we on defense. And um, and so really, um, man, I remember it like it was yesterday. Some dude hit the corner. He had an orange shirt. And when he hit the corner, he hit the corner with like, you feel me? He wasn't just moving slow like he's finna uh go to like toward the way where, you know, um Parkway Subs was. He was moving with some authority. Like he knew that we was right there and that he was coming to basically like get down on us or whatnot. And then so when he came, we wasn't so quick to run because we like, nigga, Cloudy got the gun. He goo, he cool. But as soon as he come, Running across the street, Cloudy take off. So me and TP, we like, oh shit. So we get to running. We running. We don't know if he's on a block. And the, by this time, I, uh, the, the the gates wasn't high like they is now. Or they like they had changed. The, I feel like they changed the gates a few times. But this is when they just lowered the gates. So like you could literally shoot for real, and you could hit. You feel me? You would be hitting. You won't be hitting the gates. You ain't got to worry about. Like, it wasn't so much of a, of a protection for us because, you know, like anybody above like five, 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 you feel me? You wouldn't be hitting the gate. You, you aiming straight at people. But, yeah, so we all ran. Me and my homie, we ran into a back of my building because I'm trying to get into the crib. I was no way in no form trying to be running nowhere. But because my house, I had, you know, weapons in there. So I'm running into the back, me and TP, and he's so scared. I'm like, he was so scared. And I don't like, that's why I, I um... Me personally, like, I learned to, like, when I was doing what I was doing, like, I ain't never want to be with people who was kind of, like, frantic and just kind of just, like, you know, can't control themselves. I, I can't uh, find a word I'm looking for, but um, just panicky, you feel me? And he was panicking so much, I couldn't even get the key into the door. And so I said, fuck it, we just ran up to, like, the third floor. I'm like, nigga, if they come up through the back, I'm jumping off. I don't know what you going to do. But, yeah, man, it was just a... Uh, a, a stupid day, man. Not a stupid day. It's funny now that we look back at it, cause they never did nothing. They um, I feel like he was just trying to scare us, or maybe because we ran so fast <clears throat> that he wasn't gonna come on the block. That he just didn't do nothing. Like he ain't send no, no shots was sent or nothing like that. And again, like Jay Money was just in the hallway sleep, like probably off some pills. That's what I ain't do no drugs or nothing like that, man. And um. But yeah, man, that I remember that day like it was uh, yesterday, man. Like we was gone, I couldn't even get the. But I just, uh, I was so scared, and I think about it today. Like, boy, if they really, you feel me, was trying to get get on somebody like that, and he came around the back, he would have caught us right at the door, cause I, I couldn't get the key in, cause fool. You feel me panicking so much? He broke on. I'm like, bro, and me, if I can't hear myself think, then I'm just gonna say f it. Like I just close it all out, like. I got to be able to hear myself think. And that's why, you know, like, I blank out and I don't like being around niggas like that because we'll get to fighting and we trying to run and I'm fighting you so we can't because you all out. I tell niggas, run your own way. I run my own way. I'd rather die by myself, nigga. But, yeah, that was the story to that day. I seen there was a time when you got shot at by with a silencer. Oh, yeah. Me and Balshan. Me and Balshan. Yup. Be sitting on, like, the 65th end, man. And we just, we just heard like whistling, like, and nigga, me and Sean looking at each other, and we didn't really know that it was guns. I'm thinking that it's rocks. I'm thinking that people, like the little guys, we used to play a lot of games, and niggas used to be stupid. And I was thinking that maybe it was just people throwing rocks, but then the windows around us started getting, they started to get shattered. They start shadowing uh, windows, man. So we just bailed out, man. And, and I don't, they, I don't think they even let off no louder shots. But you know, they used to always come through cam and, and um, shooting. Many times they came past shooting. Dayon got shot one of the times. Uh, he's back out on the block. Wait, who was that? They, was that no? Cause they broke Dayon leg. But yeah, he still was back on the block. You know, he ended up dying from that shot a little bit later. And um, like a few years later after that, he died from the shot and whatnot. And I knew it was that um, or whatever. But yeah, it, it's been a lot of times, man. One of the times I saved Von life, they trying to shoot at us and stuff like that. But that's just the war that we was in, man. But yeah, they was shooting silences for, and that was, uh, <laughs> luckily nobody got hit, man. Like, just they'll be there and we, 
pull is just whistling. We hit a whistling, and they pinging off the gate. And then, uh, like I said, not until they started to shatter the windows that we really like, oh, bro, they shooting. And that was just like a different time now because it's like silences. Like, they had to be shooting silences because there was no – we, we niggas would have knew if there was some – you feel me? Any gun without a silencer on that, cause you, you gonna hear the backlash. You gonna hear that pop. You feel me? And we ain't hear no none of that. And luckily we did not, cause I think it was just me and Sean right there. Man, I don't know. That that was a crazy day though. That one was crazy again, cause it's a silencer. Like you niggas got silencers, so niggas was on watch after that day. I'll tell you that much, cause. Like, niggas ain't know nothing about no silences. You mentioned saving King Von's life. You know, what all happened with that? Man, <clears throat> another random day on the block, summertime. Everybody out there. Um, and I know a lot of guys remember it. But, uh, yeah, they was just walking. They was walking up. <clears throat> and me and Von, you know, young, dumb, thinking that they coming to fight. The, that was the least thing on their mind was fighting. And me, I felt it. And cause I'm smarter than a fifth grader. It's we a hundred deep, it's kids out, everybody out. And I always just had the higher understanding that like sometimes you just you know, it was just like I I I know it that it was just God, you know, pretty much like warning me, no, nah, turn back. And but in anyway, me and Vaughn was walking to go out the gate. It was three of them. We walking like, oh man, this a it's a summer day. Y'all gonna walk over here like while we out here. Come on, it's finna be one of them. And so we walking out the gate. We we didn't get close to the gate that close because I felt like they had a gun. Cause it was only a few of them and it was a lot of us. So I'm like, bro, ain't no way they coming over here to fight. They gotta be finna shoot. And the moment that I said that to myself. I, I'm fine, bro. No, nah, we ain't going out the gate. We going back this way. He literally kicked the, um, excuse me, he kicked the window in. Boom. And then he sent one shot. Boom. But, you know, after he kicked the window in, I was already in the effect of telling Vaughn because I felt like they wasn't coming to fight. I felt like they was coming to shoot, to come to kill somebody. And so I grabbed folk. Next thing you know, we running through the park. I knocked a little girl over. And me, I love kids. Like, I love I love kids, and so I felt bad, but, you know, I was just in a whole state of mind where, like, they shooting, you feel me, and, and, and they get out the way, and so, like, man, I knocked over, like, a little, a little kid, man, running through the um, first park, and we, you know, we just running, but... <clears throat> I just say, like, yeah, that was a time that, because I know Vaughn, I know me, but, like, I, I'm just glad that, you know, I was able to... uh you know, because I don't know if they would have shot him or not. We know how bullets is. Like, they could have been right there shooting, and he never got shot. But, you know, um, I was just right there. I had got the the notion in my um, my spirit to, like, no, nah, they not trying to fight. They kicked the window in under the car that was right there on the corner. And then they sent the shot, man. And, you know, everybody fled. But, you know, it's just crazy, man. It's been – man, there's so many different stories, man. I'm talking about just with us. And now, man, because you got to think about it, it's 365 days in a year. <laughs> so how many years we done did over that, man? Every day it was all about, like, we just living in misery, bro, plotting on how to to go in. Like, it was just all, now that I think about it, it's just like, bro, I'm glad I ain't stuck in that, that realm of life, you know, stuck in that thought process. Stuck really just having to do those things and not having a way out because that's why many people – Continue on with they ain't got no way out. You feel me? Well, we feel like we don't, and so we just try to make the best out of evil, cause that's what it is, nigga. Like shit, if I'ma die, if I'ma die in the war, I'ma make sure I take some with me, and that is sad, but that's truly the uh, the trick. That's the you know the curse. It ain't no trick. That's the curse that's being played out until we can you know acknowledge the one true living God. This is just what, what the time we living in. Well, NBA Youngboy recently did an interview with Billboard, and he shocked a lot of people in this interview. You know, he came out, and he said that he feels wrong about the lyrics he's put out. You know, uh, being that you've made this change, and you've kind of, you know, came from a similar environment as him, a really violent environment, you know, uh, what do you think when you hear him say this in the interview? Man, me being honest, I got, you know, I be, when I, when I try to, like, confront 
over the people, conform over the people. And so I try not to speak as deep as I want to. And it calls for my mind pretty much to go here and here because I want everybody to understand. But, man, the utmost truth is that young boy with that interview, he know exactly what his music is doing. And, and what I like to think about young boy is that, again, like I say about a lot of dudes, we looking for a way out. There's not many ways out that's been given to us, whether it be from basketball, any sports, which they they pretty much slaves to. We can go deep into that, but say that for another day. But everybody know pretty much, you know, it's it's easier, you know, before I go into it, it's easier for all of it's easy to, for people to believe a lie because the truth is it'll put you in such an uncomfortable position in your mind and in your spirit. And that's why many people would rather believe a lie. They would rather believe that sports and everything is all authentic, that it's genuine, that the outcomes are all, you know, genuine and it's not. But, um, you know, pretty much when I think back to Young Boy, again, it just takes me to where, you know, he was just a young, broken-hearted boy, man, trying to figure himself out. And many of us saw other people going through life and we thought that the form of telling your story in the genre of rap music was the way to, you know, a way to a better life, a way to, you know, um, get in a deal. Because that's what people, when they want a deal, behind a deal becomes money. Behind money becomes comfort and peace. And that's normally, that's really what people are out to get. They ain't out. You know, I, I seldomly believe that many people, it's a few out there that, that, that probably want to do the evil rapping, but most of it started from just broken hearted kids trying to use their stories, you know, to live a better life. But there's people in the world who understand that music, what music does to a spirit, what music is to people. And so they perverted it. They perverted it. They um they perverted the wrong type of music, you feel me? Which is, they glorified death music, which if you speak in curses upon your life, you speak in curses upon others, you know, we engage in it to spiritual backlash, spiritual laws that we don't know. That's kind of like the last time I spoke of, you know, death is an easy, is a, um, is an easy one to think about. We got the power of the book, you know, the, the book of life says we got the power within our tongue to speak life and death over not just us, but those around us. And so because they desensitized us through that, through the through music, because people like, man, I rap, I sing music every single day. I use these words every single day. So goes back to what I'm saying, because the truth is so uncomfortable. People don't want to believe that. Yeah, you singing music, you doing music, but every single day you cursing not only you, but those around you. You creating an app because you are engaging into a spiritual law, whether you know it or not. And again, they don't believe the love of the truth. So the strong delusion at the most how it's in them is that, oh, this is all right. This is this form of music is OK. They create excuses to say, oh, the people, the parents uh, should keep them from it. But the music is everywhere. The parents can't be with their kids 24 seven. This stuff is everywhere. The music is everywhere. Um, uh, just what behind the music is everywhere. Broken hearted kids, you know, now seeing like genre of music that NBA young boy do. But when you listen to the music that young boy, I'm not saying all his music, just like all of anybody's music. You probably can go listen to a song where there's no killing in it or whatever. But, and, 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 and that's just that, but... When we think about a young boy, when you think about a King Von, when you think about a Lil Durk, when you think about these people, it's not the good that you really see or think about. It's the 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 gangster rap, the black death rap that gets us, you know, pretty much eye opening to even taking a liking into him because all of us got evil in our hearts. And that's just what it is. And the evil is, you know, formatted with these beats and all this stuff is so spiritual that, you know, it's too much for us being in the flesh to comprehend the spiritual. And because we don't believe the Bible and we gonna lean on we choose to lean on our own understanding. 
But the Bible literally gives you, look, it says Holy Bible. He only left you basic instructions before leaving earth. People don't get that. He only left you. That's holy. H-O-L-Y. He only left you. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And if we could all, and this is for everybody, to actually take heed to what the book is saying and to like kill what you heard about the book, kill what you learned about it growing up because he allowed for people to believe delusion so people who would come searching for the truth could be set free. And through people's unbelief, you will still believe even more because you read the word and you saw that there would be a group of people who would say that it was fake, who they would say Jesus Christ wasn't real, that he isn't the, the one true living God, that he did never manifest himself in the flesh. This is what, you know, but it, the Bible speaks of it all. And, you know, I'm really just talking deeper as to why we can't accept truth. And it all goes into side of that, you know, it's the, uh, uh, um, the melting pot. This is the melting pot. All religions, all love, all being going into one. So we don't know really what to believe. But pretty much to loop y'all back in, NBA Youngboy knows the seriousness in his music. He knows that people are literally killing each other. The, he killing the mind of man and he know that. And that's why, like he said, I'm scared to go around people. I don't know who might do me. That's the spiritual backlash that the most high is allowing to happen to him. He's tormented. He's fearful. Like he, he don't, he's scared to go around people because it's the people who he is at, he's killing them and not he afraid for them to do what he's doing to them mentally, to him in the physical. But a lot of them, but through his music are killing themselves every day spiritually. And people don't know, you got to die spiritually first in order for you to die in the physical. If any of y'all out there who know that, that about anything, spirituality, in order for anything to happen in this flesh, it has to happen in the spiritual realm first. Well, we can't see. Like, like he said, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight wickedness, rulers in high and evil places. That's the truth. But young boy know what he doing, man. I advise y'all to see and, and think deeper and to go a little bit deeper and to seeing what is all this music about. One of the big situations that's been going on in O Block is the whole A-Roy situation. You know, what did you think when you first seen that video and did you see the video? And what did you think about the whole situation? Man, <laughs> you know, I seen the video. Um, I just connected all the dots, Cam. When I seen the video, when I knew who was a part of it, I connected all the dots. Uh, you know, when I saw it, it brought a lot of, you know, really much just sorrow to my heart, bro, because I know these dudes, like, and I love them all. I love them all. I've seen them all grow up. I've watched them all have kids or, you know, I've ate with them. I've been around them and their families. I got a real good relationship with a Roy and the guy who um, you know, who took his life. And um I just, you know, while seeing that man, I just see like how far away we came from being that block that we was about love. Obviously, we took off ourselves and protected us to the best of knowledge of what we had, which obviously we was in war with those closest to us, which is still self-hate. But at least we had a love for those who was around us. And now I'm just seeing, you know, basically how every man is turning on himself, man. And it just relates back to the Bible, how the things that are about to happen in this end of time where everybody is speaking of an end time, it's not nothing um, new. This ain't foreign to nobody. If you uh, are alive right now to some form of fashion, you've heard about the end times. You heard about what is going on right now. And um, so it really must just pretty much put that, it, it made that more clear to me as though like, man, everybody going to be going against anybody. These things, these spirits that are, are, are looking for people to inhabit, they going into the hood where there's death first and they everybody just turning on each other. But it brought a lot of, um, you know, uh, sorrow to my heart and it also brought you know, a love in my heart for for the God that I serve because, man, I could still be in that same loophole. And if I was in that same loophole, me being who I am, 
standing on the principle that I stand on, the dude that did that to A-Roy, he would have had to go. Because if you lose a fight, and you think that after you lost a fight, it's okay for you to take a man's life because you can't defend yourself physically like that? I, I you know, I just really, I take a, 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 not a, I take a dislike in the people that, one, you could talk your way into some mess. You know what's going to be, um, when you see this person, it's going to be a fight. So, and no, like going into a fight, knowing that you not that with the chance that I might lose, that I might kill somebody if I do lose or something like that, it's just weird, man. I can't respect it, you know. So it was so much stuff that you know I, I you know I want to get into because again, it's different. It's a different thing to talk about a situation when you don't know the people. But I could give you all day analogy over how I feel and go more into depth because it is that I know them and some of the things that I can't even think on because I just got emotion built up just by the traumatic scenery in which that I saw A-Roy lose his life in front of the house that he lived in for many years. Play, I, I, me, play fighting with him. You know, me walking past while, while he died with him. You know, so it's just so much that 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 that's built up so much sorrow can we done we had so much sorrow another one uh, uh, another dude that stayed right on on the third floor of me got killed name of Vontae Holmes the dude I don't know if you heard about that story you, yeah they robbed him after they robbed him he tried to approach the people that robbed him on the block this happened on the block Parkway Gardens O block after they robbed him. He tried to get what he got back, and they shot him in the head, killed him. I mean, and it's just like, I'm desensitized to it, but, man, my spirit be shaking up. My flesh is so used to the death that, like, nigga, I can't even cry no more. It's like I have to make myself cry. And for that, that's something so sinister in that, that words can't even begin to imagine, man. Because we had so much hurt. And at first it was the op, like what we called the ops, them afflicting the hurt on us. You know, I had to see platoon brains split out, Oogie shot in the face, these traumatic um, sceneries that will forever stick with me, man, from the opposing side. And now situations like this are unfolding, where it's us killing each other, us being the, the the evil that we were supposed to be brethren, my brothers keep us to keep each other away from the evils like that. We doing it to each other, man. It's just so confusing, man. It's confusing and it's heartbreaking because you think about the families, you think about the families, and you think about the the uh, the brothers, the daughters who won't come in. Man, Avion had a lot of kids. That boy had a lot of kids, man. And none of them gonna be able to, you know, be able to hug their father, kiss their papa, you feel me? And that breaks my heart, you feel me? Because I grew up without my dad. My dad died, you know? And I grew up, you know, um, wanting him my whole life. So imagine if, I, I, I can't imagine if I had a little of my dad, a memory of him, and have that memory be taken away by somebody that's still roaming the streets that I, come on, it just create a whole nother demon. Like that's probably why Vaughn grew up the way he was and was a demon and he ain't care. He was out for blood because what happened to his pops? Little boys love they daddies, man. People love their fathers. And it's just, it's messed up, bro. It's jacked up. Oh, his brother, Big P, was making a lot of headlines. And I believe he's in jail now, you know, and he also at one point was shot in the head, got shot. Uh, he went through a lot, you know, over there at O'Block, man, you know. So what do you think about that part of the situation? Man, honestly, um, and I talked a little, I talked to Big P a little bit, um, like right after that. I think he had got out of the hospital and, you know, we talked and, you know, I reached out to him. I feel him for him. I felt for him because obviously when the A-Roy tr situation transpired, I made a video pretty much just speaking on speaking on what happened, pretty much just doing whatever I could pretty much to just show people there is no love on this block and, and, and how that no love on this block is just pretty much, 
you know, um, consuming everybody all around that even has a want to watch these things. But anyway, man, uh, like I, I feel as though one, I was just kind of questionable because I'm like, man, this stuff that happened. Why you wait so long to start speaking out about this? One, I was kind of questionable about that. Two, the people who and who he named that did this stuff with that did the stuff with him that shot him and did all this. I was like, I was so confused on, cause these were the same dudes that was with him right after A. Roy died, and they was in videos with him like, man, my brother, man, like we got you, bro, and and and, and so seeing that and then knowing that they shot him, I don't care, dude. I don't know what exactly happened, man. And I ended up heard, I ended up hearing afterward, after talking to Big P, that Big P was just on some really trying to run through niggas' cribs. And and and, and so people really was at a defense trying to defend themselves. And but because, you know, he's a, you know, if I be honest about it, he he's a drunk. He's a drunk. He's a person like he's an alcoholic. He get drunk. He been that nigga been getting drunk like that since I was over there, since they first moved on the block. And Big P was a, a alcoholic, and so obviously, if his brother died, I'm sure that that turned like, cause you around them, Nick, you around these dudes every day, and you know that somebody that they know killed your brother, and you know him too, but nobody did nothing, nobody come together to do nothing. So I could imagine that right there would be why he was so angry, and. You know, just letting the time pretty much, you know, sometimes things come out, anger, people boil, and they bottle stuff in, and then when it comes out, it comes out like that. But, man, I still thought that that whole situation was just like, it was sad. It's a sad situation. Like, man, this man's whole brother got killed, and and the dude who did it, he mocking him. It's been plenty of videos about the dude mocking him, talking smack, and it's just... Like, I, it's so confusing to me because it's like, I don't know where to go from it. Not only do I not know where to go, it's just like we can't turn to nobody for help because the police, is they are well uh, um, notified of everything that's going on, it's like, <laughs> it's just like in a pathless place looking for hope, but the place is pathless to get there, so there is no hope. But, I mean, we know who the hope is, but, yeah, man, just another crazy situation that, Niggas is too desensitized to actually even feeling remorseful behind. Not me, but, you know, the people that, that watch it. It's just so much stuff that happens that we can't even, you know, even feel remorseful behind some stuff. Because once we think about trying to be remorseful for this, another situation happened. Then you think about that dude, then another nigga died, then another nigga died. It's just so much going on that, man, everybody being desensitized to death, to the loss of life, through hurt, through pain. It's just a lot going on. One of the guys, you know, who was really big over there from your area, you know, and, and he passed away a few years ago, was Fredo Santana. <laughs> Did you know him? Man, yeah, I know Fredo. That's the, come on, man. That's Mr. Front Street himself. Man, on the day Platoon died was the last day I saw Fredo, man. The day Toon died was the last day that I saw Fredo. And I was just talking to Fredo, and I was just kind of like telling him, like, bro, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how we looking at bro right now in this position that he's in when so soon ago, it seemed like it was just, it seemed like OD had just died. And Toon was out there crying like a baby, man. I never seen a grown man. And I don't even think he was overgrown. I think, I can't remember exactly the age he was at, but probably 19 or 20, can't remember. I'm sure I could look it up. But maybe he was early in his 20s or something like that. But it was the first time I ever could remember really seeing a grown man cry like that, man. That was, when I say that was his best friend, that was his best friend, man. The tune was crying, man. I'm talking about so he was crying so much that the guys was telling him, like, boy, like, bro, like, the guys had to tell him, like, bro, come on, for Like, we all understand, but, like, fo, get up, bro, and, and, like, calm down, like, a little bit, fo. But he wouldn't, it wasn't no calming him down, bro, over that death. And then we, I go from seeing that to you know, running past to try to notify, uh, ooh, try to notify Oogie people about me seeing him. And then I see Toon dead that man, and, um... Yeah, man, it's just a lot, bro. I'll be honest, it's just a lot. Just even thinking about it right now, it's just even a lot. Like, 
to even try to process, bro. I'm trying to even keep my emotions, you know, just straight, for real, for real. Just trying not to, you know, just thinking about a lot of that stuff, man. It, it ain't, you know, it be bringing me back to old emotions. Oh, you know, old memories just about like they smiles, like little things that I used to see out of them that I won't never even be able to see again because they no longer here, man. But yeah, I don't know, Cam, bro. It's all just sad, man. All sad, folks. I ain't gonna lie. Well, you mentioned Platoon, and you know, I think before in the past you said you were some, you felt like you were supposed to die that day. The platoon died. Yeah, platoon. Um, yeah, yeah. And not that I, it ain't about what I felt. <laughs> it's about what transpired and how I probably most likely, if the Most High didn't have his, his covering, his hand on my life, I probably would have died that day. And the whole, again, it was a cold day. Like I said, man, um, in the video that I dropped, the day pretty much... Well, you know, we had days like that, especially when it's cold out, when it's in the wintertime. Not not every day do you get a whole bunch of people outside on the block. But it was me, Money, his girlfriend, Tia, uh, Tway, Oogie. And um, we was just sitting under this, uh, we was sitting under one of the, um, I don't know what to call it. It's just like on a, on a block, on a three flat. Right before you go into the building, it's like a little covering. So, like, if it's raining out, you ain't really going to get wet because, you know, you under a covering. And it's like a little door right there. And, man, I um, it was uh, I was up there talking to Diamond. Mama, her name is Big. This was uh, Diamond. is a girl I was going to school with. I was in eighth grade. She was in my eighth grade class. And she was really gone from um, – she was gone. I think she was visiting somewhere on, like, a, uh, for the summertime or – I, I, I don't even know if this was the summertime because it was super, super cold out. But obviously, it could be super cold in the summer, too. It wasn't snowy or nothing like that, but she was gone. I don't know whether it was uh, the winter or the summer because I, I just remember it being freezing cold. And um, anyway, so I was up there talking to her mom. And literally, I was leaving out. We weren't talking about nothing. I just used to go up there to pretty much flirt with Big because I liked her. But obviously, she was older grown. It's just like me being a kid. And anyway, so I'm going down the stairs, and as I'm coming out, Oogie was walking away. We was going to get ready to go back to the other end. And he literally like, bro, what you finna, you finna come to the other end with me? I'm, yeah, man, here I come. Like, wait on me. But as, as soon as I'm saying wait on me, out of my eyes, I see two people. And mind you, like, bro, when you grow up around people, it don't matter if they got a hoodie on and they walking from the, out of the dark. You pretty much, I, me, just me personally, because I can't, I... I know damn near everybody. I could tell the way you walk, who it is, and literally just just seeing those two dudes, they both had on masks, and, and they was kind of walking through the 6414 and the, just the, like the whole walkway. And on my spirit, it was just like, man, like, nigga, I, I swear to you, Cam, I did want to even walk that way towards folks. Now that I'm truly, you know, sometimes I, I kind of overshadow this part. I think I overshadowed it when I told it. But I was walking towards folks. And in my spirit, I'm like, nigga, I didn't trust what I saw in them two dudes. And so Diamond Mama called down to me like she heard my, I don't, clearly, because after what transpired after she called me, I never got to even know what she called me for. So I'm walking over there to Oogie and she, Jamal, come here real quick. I got to tell you something. And my spirit, like, nigga, go. I'm like, hey, Oogie, I'll be down there, bro. I'm, um, I'll get up with you. I ain't know it could have still been a guy's, but it was just something in my spirit that I, I wasn't sure about them dudes for real. Just, I was not sure. So anyway, I'm running back up to the stairs. I'm almost um up to the stairs, and all, all I hear is boom, 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 boom. So nigga, I run in the crib. I run in her crib to look out the window to see, like, because she stayed on the third floor. It wasn't like she's on the second floor or the first floor where, like, you had problem, the possibility of shots, you know, going through the window and hitting you. And so I ran up that man and literally, dude, I'm looking out the window and I see the same two dudes that I saw that was walking up that I had the feeling about. They were standing over Oogie letting off shots. I swear on my niggas. Oogie's still alive to this day, so everything. If niggas are so curious, he got shot about three, like two more times after that, which is still crazy. But man, yeah, they standing over Oogie, they shooting him. 
I'm thinking they were shooting him at least. And I, I'm talking about, man, you know, this is my homie. Like, you know, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I was scared, but I wasn't too scared. Cause the moment that I saw them run away, all I'm thinking about was, man, I gotta go help bro. But I thought he was dead. In all honesty, I swear to y'all, I thought he was dead. Them standing over him shooting him. After they ran, uh, he waited for a little bit and I'm like really in the window like, bro, what? And so Oogie gets up and he running a building that's next to him and it's DP building. And nigga, I say, you know, once I see him get up like that, nigga, all fear that's in me about them shooting and then them, they still on the block. Me just trying to go run to my, my, my brother to his help, to his need, nigga, I go right back downstairs. I run into the building that he was in and cause I'm, Damn, it's just emotions bottled up. And then I'm just like, bro, hi. Like, what the fuck? Like, hi. And he got so much blood coming out of his mouth because they shot him in his nose. It came out his ear. And then they shot him in his hand. They were standing over this man uh, doing all that shooting, and they shot him twice. They shot him two times. Literally, he should have. I ain't going to say he should have been nothing because what the outcome was the outcome, and that's what should have happened. But in normal situations, he would have been dead. In normal situations, if she never, she don't call me, what I'm about to say next probably never happens. So again, I'm seeing Oogie get, um, I'm at Oogie's help, I'm, 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 and I'm finna run down to tell his people that he got shot. And so I'm running down to tell Oogie people that he got shot. And something out of the corner of my eye, I just like see somebody kind of like laying towards like the bushes. And so like, Luckily, I see it because, nigga, I was running so fast. I got wheels. So I'm running so fast, and then I just see that. And then I, I, I kind of scared, but, like, I just, like, hold up. If that's somebody laying in the ground, that's another that's another one of the guys potentially dead. And this would be platoon. So I run over there, like, pretty much. Cause, and then I saw the building that he came out of, and I'm like, his girl lived in that building. And how they killed him, you could tell, like, well, we already know that the building – that they was trying to get into was right next to the building he was coming out of. And he was only coming out of it probably because like any shots go on on the block, nine times out of 10, it was only it's our doing. We ain't have situations where the ops come on the block and they send the shots at the, and anything like that. And so man, seeing tune like that, man, seeing like, you know, I think they hit him with like exploding tips. So whereas as soon as it, you, it hit you, you know, and, and and that was like a, a, a grave sight, you know, and um Where were you at when Platoon was shot? Uh, uh when he was shot, I think I heard of like man, cause I like I told you so much stuff had happened. When, right? And, and so it'd be so hard to really think about all of it when I'm thinking about Oogie. But I heard a few more shots go off before I ran downstairs to A Oogie. There was a few more shots that went off, but it was kind of like in the distance. And that's why I tell you, like, I have so many emotions bottled up where it's like, nigga, I'm the only one out there running around. I'm trying to go help folks. And these niggas could have still got up with me because they still was on a block. Like, but... I was, man, again, like, nigga, I wasn't thinking about it. I'm trying to help my friend, period. I'm trying to get to his people and them so that they could know that he is shot. And, and I didn't know what kind of that grave danger he was in. But I saw a uh, platoon man right there. Brains just, he got killed right in front of his girlfriend house, man. Right in front of his girlfriend house, man. And, um, yeah, it was just uh, 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 a lot of emotions going through. Through my head, but yeah, and that was the last day that I saw Fredo. Fredo was literally, he came on the block. You know, if some after somebody died, Fredo was on the block, man. And I just remember walking around him on the block, man, just crying, talking to him like fool, like, you know, really I was sad at the fact that Platoon died and how he was acting when O got killed and now he dead. And then, you know, me seeing his brains, and I was, you know, a little bit of happy because Oogie was still alive. And, you know, that was you know, my everyday friend who I would hang with, man. So I had a lot of emotions going on. Who I was staying with, I should have been in the house after that. Nigga, they should have made me go in the house. But, you know, we was blockheads, man. Niggas couldn't take us off the block. We was on the block, man. Every day, all day. Niggas crying to get outside. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that was one of the worst days of my life, man. To see brains like that, this ain't no movie. This ain't no movie. 
this real life to see a homie like you. And then I couldn't even see where he got shot at. You know, like, because Oogie had so much blood. I'm like, bro, where is you even shot at? He ain't even know, man. He was bleeding from his ear to his mouth, from his hands. So, and he had his hands over there. So, it was so much blood coming out. The scene of, um, and me and Platoon, we, we had, like, the same color-ish jacket where it was, like, dark, like, a dark blue and, like, a dark uh, gray uh, striped hoodie, and then like the lady that I was living with, um, she thought that 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 it was me, and I'm in my head like, it's crazy that you even thought that it was me, cause the situation that had happened, I, damn near like I would have gotten at least shot, at the at the least I would have been shot, and if it was two of us right there, I'm I'm just banking on that, that they would have probably finished both of us off doing that as two, sending the, twice the amount of shots because it's two people. But yeah, man, crazy situation, man, crazy situation. Did that change you at all? Hell yeah, it changed what I wanted to do with my life. I started to look at how they was going out and it wasn't making me no monster. It wasn't making me, uh, mind you, man, I came in through death. My dad died and I was born that seven months. I seen my granny get killed at a young age. I seen this, these type of things I was used to, but I was, you know, man, from these, situ these strings of situations, I'm like, man, I thought about my nephew and my niece and I'm like, I can't, I can't die to the streets. I can't die in the streets. And um, I, I need a way out. Seeing all this stuff, I'm like, man, I gotta. And and there was no way out other than the seeking the truth, the God of this world, the God who created all of us, who many people we feel shame to talk about them because it's not a popular thing to do. But nigga, I'll never let nobody make me feel shameful for the one who set me free of my past life and who gave me my new life. And he want to do the same with, the, with everybody, no matter what you look like, because this is just a costume to the spirit that you hold that is his. Your spirit is has no face. This is a costume. But uh, anyway, man, yeah, it, for sure, uh, I started to really think about where I was going to be at. And not only that, but like how I wanted to be, how did I want it to be remembered? Did I want it to be remembered? being killed in the street by a, 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 a brother who don't know who he really is, because that's why we killing each other. We don't know who we are. And if we knew who we were, <laughs> there'd be no way that the, that they would, uh you know, we would be allowed to be tricked as how we being tricked, not actually killing each other, running each other down in the streets, gunning each other down over blocks, over gangs that none of us created, over these things that we get, no monetary act. It's literally no substance to the things that we kill each other over. We kill each other over words, over hate that is embedded and rooted in, 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 in things that, again, it's no substance. And we just fight in a war with really no, no cause to fight in. And the only cause that niggas gonna say is, is that, oh, they killed our homies. They killing us and they killed us, so that's why we go and, and, and we kill them. And it's just like it's a, a never ending cycle. Like Vaughn said, you gonna damn sure you gonna damn that need all the players to be gone for the game to end. But it's sad that we look at it like that. That talks about a strong delusion. That is the strong delusion that the Most High said He will send upon those who don't believe the, the the love of the truth, which is the Bible. Now, growing up in Old Block. You know, we've all, you know, we've all heard the stories, you know, the wild stories and, you know, everything that happens and, and all the street stuff, you know, but one of the, you know, famous guys to, I don't want to say he came out of there, but came out of your area and, and was hanging in Old Block a lot was Little Reese. And I believe, you know, you had a story about Little Reese when you were growing up over there with him. Yeah, <laughs> Little Reese, one of the stories that I, oh yeah, you probably talking about the funny story. Well, shit, it ain't funny to the dude who who it happened to, but um, oh yeah, okay, cause I I'm just thinking about like cause how many stories I did on my platform about Reese, and I think it was only one, but <clears throat> I believe you referring to the story, man. It was a day that we were all just standing out on the block, man. We're standing on the front of the block, and there was a random dude who was walking past. And man, that's just the laws that you know be established in the in the hoods. So like, if a nigga walk, if a dude walking past, niggas just like, man, who is like, who are you? And Reese, 
I remember, bro, like, you know, cause nobody else was thinking about him. I could tell cause we ain't say nothing. It's like random dudes walk past all the time, like let them walk past. But he was walking past and restocked him. He, hey, check it out. He, I remember dude, he look, he like, <laughs> he looking like me. Yeah, nigga, you check it out. So he walked on the block and I'm just in my head like, boy, you should have kept going. Cause I just know how shit could go. Like we don't all the time beat, like get down on nobody in the worst way. But like, man, people make fun out of just smacking somebody around knowing they ain't going to do nothing. And so you never just know what you might get into just being around. Like, you know, just I didn't never, I didn't know what a, uh, we was going to be getting into having him come on the block. But anyway, so he come over there, he walk over there, man, and re-show, and re-show him a gun. And I was kind of like, um, not a, I, I wasn't amazed, but this was the first time I ever seen somebody, like, had a gun and the way he had his, he had a belt on. And he ain't have a holster. But his belt was holding his gun in some weird way that I never saw. And so, like, he lifted his shirt up. And I was like, nigga, hold up. Like, what are you doing? You feel me? I'm not this nigga ain't got no police holster or nothing like that. So, but I look. And then he had his gun right there. And then he's basically, like, robbing dude. He was telling dude, like, nigga, I need all that. And dude was like, man, I'm just trying to go get some weed, bro. He like, nigga, I don't care, nigga. Like, I need all that. He ain't showing him the gun until he told him, like, nigga, I need all that. And so, dude just went in his pocket. I don't even know why, but he had. <laughs> maybe folks saw he had some type of, like, 3D uh, scanner in the eye, cause this nigga had some money for real. I don't know how Reese knew, but the nigga had a, a wad of cash in his pocket, man. And he gave it all up. Uh, he gave it all up to him cause he had a gun. And then he just sent folks right on his way. And then I'm just in my head, like just thinking about Reese, like, cause you know, we even before he used to come on the block and hang around us a lot, we used to hear a lot of stories about Reese. We used to even even me, I'm, but I'm because I'm younger. You feel me? And I know like Duke and all them, like they went to school with Reese and stuff like that. But for us younger, a lot of us that was coming up younger, like yeah, we know a little bit about Reese. We started to really grow close with him when he was on the block every day coming around, and he ain't really started doing that till I was like 15. You feel me? And um, but yeah, that was uh 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 you know uh one I ain't never seen nobody tuck their gun in their belt like that, so niggas started doing that afterward. But yeah, he robbed that dude, man. All that dude was doing, he walking trying, he say he's trying to go get him some weed, man. Walking past the block, got got everything he had in his pocket took. But yeah, Reese is crazy though. He he one of them people though, honestly, like. You could look like when I used to look him in his eyes, his eye like you. You know how they always say like the souls is to the wind, the eyes is the windows to the soul. But man, looking at Lil Reese's eyes, bro, like you, I, me, I see, and I never really see that with too many people. But you see, like, you just see just like darkness, nigga. Like I remember that from him, just like looking into his eyes and how I ain't really. And I ain't saying that there's no human human part to him, cause I I know there's a human part, a human aspect to him. But man, just looking in his eyes for real, man, it was just something. You know, I don't like to be, but it was just something kind of sinister to like how dark like that nigga eyes was, fool. And that man, niggas just get stuck into those, like you know, and just living inside themselves, just a dark place, like. You feel me in that? And that's what I think about that was that he was stuck in a dark place in that time. Just maybe the things he seen, what he done been through. And because how he got his name, like we all know how niggas get names. And niggas don't get names just for the, the most niggas. Because I know some niggas from the block, they got a name. But they just got a name because they just was around like all the time. And then they forced the name. And, you know, but they weren't actually out there living. And, you know, God, God. Well, what's the way? Y'all willing, not y'all willing, but luckily they wasn't out there because obviously you don't need, you know, you, you might want to fake it, but the, the sad thing about faking it and then you kind of make it niggas actually do end up killing somebody, you feel me? Because that's where I was going with that. Many people, they don't take lives or they don't even aspire to take lives. You know, they just play the internet game and they go, they get notoriety through that. Or maybe they start rapping and get notoriety through that. But yeah, Reese is different though, for sure. That, he different. Him and, and, and Fredo was for sure different. That was another thing about Fredo though. When I first seen that nigga too, you know, kind of like another story within that. It ain't a, a long story, but 
He just looked damn show crazy. That, and I don't know if it was a look that he wanted. So, you know, we 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 got though, we get those ways where pretty much we it's a def defensive mechanism where a nigga wants you to think he crazy, so you don't approach him with no BS, you feel me? And so I understand that, but yeah, Fredo, he he was another one. Not that his eyes was as dark as Reese, never, but he just used to always, like, <laughs> the nigga just used to look crazy, and he, you know, had all those tattoos on him, tattoos on his face, on it, all over his body and stuff like that, but yeah, man. Do you have any stories hanging out with Fredo? I mean, other than, no, nah, no, nah, other than, you know, just seeing him and walking around. Like, it was weird because, like, I used to, the, the thing with Fredo and them, like, I never, like, he wasn't in my age range. So I knew him just, like, by, we go on front street, shake his hand, what's good with you, bro? Like, that's the relationship I pretty much knew with Fredo, which pretty much everybody got that relationship. When you go on they hood, y'all laugh, y'all shake hands. But, like, close-knit stories, like, nah, it was just... You know, the, the closest story that I had with him, weirdly, was the day that Toon died, bro. We was walking around the block. I was crying to him, and I was, you know, pretty much telling him everything that happened and whatnot, and it was just me and him. And then after that, him and Sosa and them, they pretty much blew up after that. Them niggas got rich, and then I ain't see, see Fredo on the block no more. That I, I, to my, the best of my knowledge, and maybe because it was an emotional memory, an emotional part of my life that it probably stuck out more than the other times, but I, to my, the best of my knowledge, I feel like that was the last time I seen Fredo on the block for real. Another popular name out of old block is T-Roy. And I believe you knew T-Roy. Yeah, nah, nah, that's Troy was my boy, you feel me? I know Troy. Like, and I know everybody basically on the block. Like, nigga, I got real time with them, like, real relationships. Rather it be, you know, big bro, I'm still like me, because I like, I ain't had no no tight knit family of my own. I was kind of, I was adopted, and I had my sisters, my biological sisters was adopted into the same family that I was, but they still wasn't men. They wasn't boys. So, yeah, but um, T Roy, them niggas, what about him specifically, though? I was just gonna ask if you have any stories you could share about him. Oh man, uh, shit. <laughs> One story was, was cause me personally like a funny story, and me and Troy we really we the same sign, Scorpios, and really I ain't, hey I know I pre astrology we ain't getting into it, but this the old me and where I was thinking pretty much about astrology. Now I don't, I'm not no Scorpio. I don't attain to none of that astrology stuff. When you know better, you do better. But when we was young, obviously, you know, me and him having the same birthday, we, with the, on our birthday, it, it Scorpio. That's the uh, sign that falls under the date of which our birthday falls on. And um, so we used to already, you know, kind of like, and, and we are a lot alike. The difference, only difference is, is he's short and I'm, I'm taller than him. But I'm an alpha male. T-Roy was an alpha male. <clears throat> And me, I stood on the principle <clears throat> to where if you shorter than me, fool, you you not going to beat me in no fight. And, you know, short dudes, they got, like, little man syndrome. So, T-Roy was the same way. Like, he used to always, bro, like, think that he could beat me. And I'm like, Troy, fo, I know what you do, but it's like, fo, you not me, bro. I beat you. Like, you can't. The hand side, that's all me. Over with. And so we used to always like play fight. And there was one time we used to play fight and I made a mistake and I hit him in his mouth. Cause <laughs> I hit him, he whoop. Folks got so angry, bro. The nigga got so angry, tears started coming down his eyes. And and you know, um, like obviously, like I cause I cause I felt bad that I hit him. What he did to me, I, I let him do it. But he just balled me up. He wouldn't hit me in my face, but I just let him ball me up. You feel me? He was just like, you know, hitting me all. Like, that's what we, we call balling up. Where you feel me? Because you going to ball up. Somebody start punching you, feel me, all of your chest. You, you going to ball up. So, like, he balled me up and whatnot. And it, it was just a funny moment because, to me, I was showing him, like, folk, my reach is way too long for you. Like, you, you a little boy in terms of if we fight, I'm going to beat you. I'm way bigger than you. I could fight just... Just as well as you, and my arms longer than yours, so it gave me the advantage. But yeah, other than that, man, you know, T. Roy and them used to come get me every day before we started really, before they started really going all in, you know, because there was a period of time where all of us used to always be together. All of us, you know, kind of hanging in the same group. But again, I got weird 
like stints in my life where I be with Von them for a certain period of time, Troy and them, but yeah, Troy used to always, him and his, his him and his cousin, Lil Terry used to always come get me, we used to flip. We used to always jump on people together. We used to do a lot of dumb stuff together, but man, Troy was my boy, man. It was my that was my birthday twin, man. I love him missing the death. It's, it's sad, man. It's just sad that a lot of them ain't here no more. And you know, they did what they did, and I wish that the other the people that they did it too would have been able to live out their life with their friends. And wish it was just fighting, cause that's what we used to do. We just used to fight them. We used to go on Eberhard and STL, really playing, play fighting, and they cribs like for real. Torrance, it's some on their side. There was some dudes that was on Vernon. Torrance, they know I'm Wooski and them. They know who Torrance and all them was. They know how it was. Because Wooski, again, he from O-Block. He's not from over there. He's from here. But I guess, like, when his people move, you know, he rather claim they block because Wooski used to fight on the block a lot. Like, we used to beat him up a lot. And maybe he ain't like the guys used to talk about people. So if you didn't dress up to par, it didn't matter how old you were, you would get talked about. And, and I know Wooski probably was one of those ones because they talked about me. And so I know, like, you know, Wooski family a little bit. I knew kind of like they, they was kind of like poor. Obviously, we all was poor. But there were certain people who was, they was poor, but they didn't look poor. And you know, I'm just I'm just knowing that Wooski a look at least like they probably gave him some 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 stuff for being, you know, what they would call dirty because he ain't had fashion or designer or whatever it was. You know, we've all heard stories about King Von. And, you know, I think you've kind of touched on this a little bit, but I believe you and him had some situations where, you know, there were some crackheads on the block or something. Uh, nah, nigga, there wasn't no crackheads on the block. If you talking about, um, <laughs> them niggas was fighting, <laughs> if, with, with, with Sosa, with Chief, with Chief Keith, with Sosa, like, that was the time them niggas was fighting a crackhead, and we was on 63rd, and then Vaughn, and, like, <laughs> it was a funny moment, and I ain't, you know, literally, I helped fight, but, like, this was a super club. And, and I don't, it'd be stupid for me to even go back into that, you know, that time frame. But this is what we called him, a super club. He was a crackhead, but he wanted the everyday crackhead like you think you would punch him and a nigga would be knocked out. He was kind of up, but Vaughn, like, you know, when we used to go out there and try to fight people, we used to pick, we was knocking out grown. I'm talking about, I was seeing him drop some of the biggest dudes, Vaughn. You know, he was he was snaking them. It wasn't like he was fighting them head on. But like, I see he dropped some of the biggest dudes. But anyway, with that, we was right there on 63rd. is me, Vaughn, and Sosa. And um, I just remember Vaughn hit him. Boom! He just used to steal off dudes. Steal off. You know, that was, that was the fun that we had. And it just speaks even more so to no hope that the only fun, the only laughs that we got in our environments was beating up on who crackhead, beating up on homeless people. It just shows you the mind that... That atmosphere created for us, which our fun was rooted in evil. Everything we done was rooted in evil. But yeah, Von crack him, boom. The crackhead, like what? He hit Von, boom. Next thing you know, Von right there, he going at it with a crackhead, dog. He literally right there fighting a the crackhead. They going at it, and I remember, um, really just laughing. And I should have probably been helping, but he was fighting a crackhead. And me, I'm laughing because I'm like, "Fo, this crackhead really going at it with Vaughn. So it was a funny moment. But then they stopped fighting in the streets. You know, when you fighting niggas be going all over everywhere. And then now they buy like this phone pole. Anybody know who right there on 63rd, the way that you go uh up to the L on 63rd, that's right by the beauty salon. If you, I don't know if that phone pole... Still right there, but it used to be a little phone pole. Excuse me, and anybody from around that way, they know what I'm talking about. And so I'm sitting right there on like the little stairs part. Sosa kind of sitting there laughing with me. So Vaughn like get around right, and I, I wonder why he ain't never say nothing about us not helping him, but I guess cause Sosa, what he did next. Like, cause dude was like by the phone pole, and Sosa like, like hit him with like his forearm. He boom, you know, Sosa a big dude. He was big, he's probably that. The size he is now, minus all the weight, he was that same height, probably like ever since he was in seventh, seventh grade. So he had like probably like six something feet. So anyway, he he hit him. Boom, dude hit his head on a pole. And and stuff like that, man. It just man, we used to be crying laughing. That was that was the fun that we had, man. And I just remember dude 
crying, laughing, man. That that dude hit his head so hard on that pole, boy. I, I we look, I low key thought he was dead. He was knocked out cold, fool. And I just knew, like, I just know how niggas be. So after Sosa hit him, I'm like, I know Sosa finna like be quick to try to make it seem like he knocked him out. So I'm in the back of my head like, wait till this nigga try to make it seem like he punched him. I'm gonna tell everybody that nigga with the, the real truth. Cause I, me, that's just me. Cause I used to love, I used to knock people out for real. And like, you know, it was just something that I had calculated in my head. Like watch folks gonna try to lie. And I'm gonna be right there like, nah, nigga, you know you ain't punch him, you pushed him. And so yeah, Sosa like basically pushed the crackhead into the phone pole, knocked him out. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad, but like, you know, man, shoot. Crackheads and homeless people different. <laughs> but yeah, they one the same. In the, in the... I think when you first went viral, you first went viral for telling the story about K.I. and Vaughn. About, you know, what happened that day or, you know what I'm saying, your experience with it, you know. You know, you kind of got a lot of backlash for coming out and saying this, you know, what was your reaction to everything? Nigga, my reaction when it's just, um, I, I, I resort to anger because it's like, how y'all going? And most of the niggas who ain't nobody from my hood doing this, it ain't nobody from no other hood, they might not want the truth out or maybe they don't know the truth so they can't speak on it to even expand upon. But to the fans, I was confused because it's like, nigga, Y'all watch YouTube videos and y'all think that watching YouTube videos of dudes who never step foot around nobody, they got all the information. I don't even know how, but they take the information of those people who making YouTube video over somebody that was running with these niggas. These my best friends. And so I was like, just confused because it's it don't make no sense. And I'm I, I again. When I told that story, it, it wasn't to shine light on that. When we get in these interviews, understand people, we answer the questions that's presented to us. That was my first interview ever. And Fuchsius heard me talk about it. And so he asked me about it on his platform and it went viral. And people, you know, they, they, they got they, you know, they just think that what they heard is the truth. And I'm trying to show them, like, nigga, I am the truth that y'all was, like, looking for. Not big putting myself up on no pedestal, but all those stories that, you feel me, was out and was saying this person did this and this person. Nigga, I was, that was what I was doing, really. And it wasn't to glorify it. It was to bring truth to what was going on, but to show people how we was wrong and even, the, you know, even glorifying it, even... Just looking at it as a source of entertainment, even being infatuated to the point where niggas is watching all these drill videos, drill videos, drill videos, and they gaining nothing from it. You in poverty, stricken areas, and this is what you worried about. This ain't getting you from out of that neighborhood to uh, uh, Beverly Hills in a way, because that's what niggas, you know, aspire to get. They aspire to live in peace and live in high, you know, with the luxury. I say Beverly Hills for luxury. And so that's why I came out was to really right the wrongs that I saw in these videos and to show people how we were, how we were wrong and what we were doing, how Vaughn was wrong and what, what they was doing, how our atmosphere was what it was only due to the curses, only due to, you know, the people who had the heart to, to trick us in the way that they did. He allowed for them to implement anything that could, you know, play on our psyche and that would, you know, eventually lead us to battling each other, killing each other and things like that. But, man, it, it really just, it was, you know, kind of angering me that people would think that they know more than me. And I'm not like nobody else that y'all see out here. I'm not none of them. I took a full scholarship. If you did not know, after I gave my life to Christ, I ended up on Sports Illustrated. 
being flown out, won a numerous award from the National Football Foundation for my perseverance in my life, coming from where I came from. So I have no, absolutely no want to sit up here and lie about anything that I've spoken on. I've spoken on it for reasons to get people to, to, to come around to real truth. Not only about what was transpired in the streets, but the one real truth who is Yahusha Hamashiach, the Christ, like, you know. And so it was just he was having me talk on that and meeting people where they was and, and, and to bringing them over to his glory. But, yeah, man, I was frustrated, you know, at, at that because, like, it's just a bunch of no. And I'm, I'm not calling y'all nobodies, but if on this subject. Y'all opinion means absolutely nothing. That's just the truth. It means absolutely nothing for the fans. Y'all just our voices filling up the comment section. So what happened that day? From Nigga, your perspective. Really, what happened? Just and and, and any time I bet you you can go look at what I said on any interview when I said it on my set. If 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 you watch me just through the totality, I bet you I say every story the same way. I probably add on a little bit more of what I could remember, but I always say the same stories the same way, and that's how you always can know truth. But anyway, man, I'm sitting on the front of 6446. I can't remember. Dante crib was 6444, so this must have been a 46. We were sitting on a 46, nigga, literally. And I'm just standing, man. I, I was just, I think I was just coming out of uh Nene house. This is a lady house who I, I I think I was standing there at the time, and I was just standing, you know, just looking. I was just looking, and then Vaughn walked up to me, and I'm, I shook his hand. He like looked straight, and then I looked straight, and I'm like, nigga, why, why, why are you telling me to look straight? He like look straight, and when I'm finna say to you, don't look at me after I tell you. So I'm like, I, I bet in my head, I'm like, like, what is this nigga finna tell me? But he literally say just like this. We, I'm looking straight. He man, why I just run up on Ki, and um, he know why I just ran up on them niggas and caught. And called K.I. She was the last one running out of the gate. And in my head, I'm obviously, forgive me, I had the lack of knowledge. I didn't know what I knew now. You know, I had to grow up. And when I grew up, I put my childish games behind me, my childish mind. That game banging, all that BS, I put it behind me. So I'm just taking y'all into the mind of what I was thinking then. I was like, nigga, no way. Because, bro, K.I. was like a pest. Literally, a couple days before that, nigga, I remember her riding on the bike, like, you know, taunting us, and nigga, we trying to chase her back on the block, but she get out of that skirt on the bike, she gone. And nigga, I, I, she was somebody that, like, you, we hated. It. And it's sad, you know, even thinking about, talking about these stories, you know, in the newer me, bringing me back to the old, the old me, it's just like, it just always put me in a position, a state of mind, or a, a, a state of in my spirit. Like, nigga, y'all was so evil. We were so young. We ain't even know how evil. But, yeah, he told me, man, like, look straight ahead, man. He, I ran up on them niggas called Chaotic. Last one coming out of the gate. Literally. And that's how. And then I'm, ooh, already. And I'm just in my head like, damn, for real. And sure enough, after he told me that sirens came. Sirens had just hit, boop, they were just over there picking the body up and whatever. And I'm just like, wow, fool. I was just like, damn. But, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't saying damn like in a bad way. I was saying damn like finally. And, and, and I hate that, but, you know, I'm just to give the ultimate truth. Like, yeah, I wasn't always where I am now. And that's what God come to do. He kind of set the captives free. What is the captive? Those who are captive. You know, those who is... Rooted in sin, who live their life in sin, who live their life in evil. You feel me? Who you? The evil is what we are captured by. We in captivity with these chains around our neck that we don't even see. But it's the lifestyle, and he come to set all of us free from that lifestyle. Man, we forgiven for all, even all the bads that I did, all the bads that y'all done. He want to set you free from it because who can better bring those out of darkness? Those who were in darkness can better bring those who are in it currently out because I know about it. And now that I see the, the greater light and I experience this and I like it shines so much. And now I see why we did what we did. Now I see why, how I was able to be tricked and, and things like that. So, but yeah, man, yeah, sad story. You know, I'm only adding an extra part to it because I feel remorse for even, you know, 
being happy that a life was taken, but that's the war that they got us living. We live in a war where when we kill another one that, that's on the hit list, nigga, like with Lil JoJo, when he died, we threw a party. That's the dysfunction we live in. That's the dysfunction we live in, and that's the dysfunction I'm currently now trying to slowly but surely break them barriers down, man, so we can know who we all are. You mentioned K.I. was a pest. Her and Vaughn had, like, you know, a Twitter thing going on also. Mm -hmm. You know, what was going on behind the scenes, you know, of her being a pest and, like, the whole Twitter thing? <laughs> Nigga, Vaughn was the real Twitter pest. And she was, too. Because I, they lied about her, um, you know, murdering all the people that she murdered. But she was one that was in the streets. And there was a time that we heard about her shooting at somebody. So she was out there trying to do what she was doing. K.I. was. And Vaughn was trying to do what they was doing. But they whole little liking that whole little plant thing. Because they, she probably was ta just talking to talk. But Vaughn wasn't talking to talk. But that's kind of like what we used to do back then, Cam. We used to be doing a little Twitter beef and a little Twitter parties, making jokes, talking about what we going to do to each other. And a lot of us versus I bet a lot of them, if they given the opportunity, they would have killed us just as well as what they what we were doing or would have done if given the opportunity. But Vaughn, that, that wasn't no game. It looked like a game, but that was really like a, a whole cat and mouse game. Of like, yeah, I like you. I want to date you. Like, let's go out. But the whole time, he trying to kill her. He wasn't playing her. It's people that really think that this man was attracted to her. They really think because of these tweets and no, come on, bro. I seen with the females that Vaughn used to be playing with. Nah, folks with no, no low key gay stuff. He was, he wanted to murder that girl and she probably wanted to murder him. That was the whole Twitter love, uh, whatever. That was what that was all about. What did you think when King Vaughn showed up in the KI documentary? Man, um, I ain't even um, <clears throat> I ain't watched the KI documentary. That type of stuff, Cam. I'll be honest. Why do I? I I have no want to watch stuff that I know that they not even they, they don't have the whole truth. If they would have had some 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 of the dudes in there that um KI was around speaking or something like that, maybe I would have watched it to see what they was gonna say. But I am not watching uh, whoever it was presenting this document, Terry or uh, whatever what you want to say. Uh, I wasn't watching it because I already knew it wasn't going to have no truth. It was how many people they said this girl killed. Like, I don't know. She died before she even grew up. She died at like 16, 17 or something like that. She wasn't 18 or nothing like that. She died as a, and, 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 and that was before things got, she probably died before 17. She probably died at 16. I don't know how old she was, but I, she didn't make no, she didn't make the noise that they said she made, and, and I'm glad she ain't put all those bodies on her belt, you know, because the people died regardless, but they was trying to say she did this to them, and she ain't do no none of that to nobody. I remember those those scenes like, um, you know, like it was yesterday. It was probably, she's probably young, yeah, younger than 16. I, I wish that I could, you know, know it for, for certain what age she died at, but no, nah, I didn't watch that, that, uh, that documentary because I knew it would have been all like, uh, assumption. That's all they be doing is assuming. That's all it is, is assuming, dog. I ain't watching that. Do you think King Vaughn would care that you're telling his stories? I think that in the way that I'm telling his stories now, yeah, King Vaughn, he would love that I'm doing it. And because he sees when a man dies, all is revealed to him. So when he died and he saw that, oh, man, if you ever heard about heaven and hell, and now you see that this is real, like if you if you ever if if y'all haven't it's a story called it's a story in the Bible called Lazarus and the poor man, and this story should reveal to y'all a lot. La it was a poor man, right? And Lazarus was a rich man, and the poor man would always go to the rich man's house just begging for things. But all he could get was basically the dog licking his sores, and that was basically all he could get so he left virtually with nothing it was a rich man great substance he never had anything anyway they both die they both die and Lazarus is in hell and the, the poor man is in a place called Abraham's bosom the bosom is like the chest part this is some spiritual stuff that you know was in 
in effect before Christ, you know, died and because he went into the bosom, took everybody out. Anyway, so the the the, the um the poor the, the rich man was in a, the state called hell, but the poor man was in a state called uh like heaven. It's what it would be like a heaven. And the rich man yelled over to the poor to, to Christ and he was like, could you please have the poor man dip his finger in a bit of water to, to put it on my tongue? And Christ was saying no. He told him like no. And then other, after that, Lazarus was like, well please can you send the poor man to at least warn the people that um warn my family, warn my friends about this place called hell, warn them and tell them that it is real. But then Christ was like, no, nah, if they want to believe about heaven or hell, they got the prophets at which that the, the most I put in the world. So if they want to believe, they got to believe through them. I say that story to say that I, we know the, the lifestyle that Vaughn lived, whether you love them. Or, 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 or not, you have to be honest with, we don't get to say who goes to heaven or hell unless you read the Bible and unless you come with that concrete fact that is in there. You live a work, a lifestyle of inequity, we know where they go. We know, again, where the lifestyle that Vaughn lived. So based off the lifestyle he lived, based off me having interactions with him as a kid, asking him, do you even believe in God? Him telling me, no, I'm not saying he didn't come around, but don't think that you can repent on your deathbed and be forgiven. It don't work like that. You ain't tricking God. You ain't playing God like that. I know Vaughn's heart. I know what he had a heart to do. And that's why he did what he, all the things that he done. But I, I said that story solely to, to tell people that if Vaughn could uh, 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 come or send a message to those he loved, send a message to his friends about what he's experiencing right now, he would. Many people, uh, being who y'all is and what y'all think Vaughn uh, would say, man, when you dead and, 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 and all the laughs and the giggles and, and it's really real, where you don't have free will no more. You don't think... A person that loved as deeply as Von did would really want to be like, hey, bro, it's real. We thought that that was real. That was a distraction. That was to get us here. Satan, who can never enter heaven ever again, is his only job is to pervert the mind of a man, to pervert everything that a man sees to trick you out of your spot. Don't matter what your ethnicity is, your color, your background. He has a job. He has a duty. And that is to so that everything. Every man, if I'm going to hell, I don't want you to experience the greater things in life. I want you to think that the best is you, what you see is what you're living in. And that's what everybody pretty much is stuck in. So that's why they want to tell me that Vaughn is in heaven and this and that. But go read the Bible for yourself and you will see that not nearly the people that y'all swear up and down went to heaven is going to heaven. <laughs> not nearly. When did you guys start to grow apart? Man, we when we started to grow apart with him and T. Roy, I think it was a little bit after OD died, man. I think because after O died, man, I think them niggas really started like, you feel me? Or maybe soon, maybe OD or Toon, right? Some, no, nah, it had to be O, had to be O. I think right there in one of them things, we, it ain't that we grew apart. It was just that them, like, you know, we everybody was virtually going down the same path. But it was some who was a little further down on that path. The path was to death, like Vaughn would eventually get to, or even killing somebody else, which he did that as well. But all those sins lead to death, which leads to the second death, which is a longer story that I don't want to talk about. But yeah, we pretty much all, T. Roy and um, Vaughn, we stopped. Like, we used to always have times and places after they would virtually hang with them all the time. We still would go to parties together. I still would spend the night at Vaughn crib. It was never no really growing apart from them until, for me, until I, um, until one to his mama moved off the block. That was like the last, one of the last times he got locked up and his mom got kicked out. And, um, and even then, you could literally go on Twitter and find a tweet where Vaughn was saying, like, he was going to come and pick me and Vaughn up, which he did. One of the funnest days we, we ever even had or whatnot. But anyway, just like we ain't really never really fully grew apart. It was just they more so hung out with the big guys because, 
you know, the big guys was more on the type of time that they was trying to be on, which really was, they was on kill time. Them niggas was on kill time. And me, I liked guns and all that, but, and I ain't never had a heart to really want to kill a man. I ain't never really had a heart to want to kill a man or, you know, and that's why I eventually, you know, sought out a greater life because, man, I ain't want to have that, that, that on my hands. I had, a, I love people. That's why I say I'm a fighter. I would fight, but trying to kill a man over, nigga, I ain't see no reason. It was just, it was all just stupid to me in reality. So, you know, we forced ourselves into positions, forced ourselves to, you know, doing certain things that we knew was wrong. But, you know, for those who understand basic common human decency, we know everything that we was doing. You know, we was young, so pretty much moving off of, uh, uh, all the adrenaline and everything that we had in us and, you know, the testosterone building up. So we was quick to, you know, think that we was men and stuff like that. But it's just sad, man. <clears throat> it's just sad, man. The lack of knowledge. With the lack of knowledge, how that could shape a life. How, and not just a life, but a community. And a community would go on to shape the world of a mind, of a, of a, of a man us that looked like this. Because a lot of Parkway Gardens, Oak Block, they shaping the lives of the minds of a lot of black men out there in the world. Uh, we feel like we need to be uh, attached to something, and niggas not even knowing this gang life. You attaching yourself to nothing but death. It's rooted in nothing but Freemasonry and death. That's it. That that's the truth. That's that's the truth. And if you don't like the truth, man, that's <laughs> that's pretty much on you. You had mentioned one of the funnest days with Vaughn. You know, we hear a lot about of the negative stuff. You know. Well, so what happened in that day that made it such a good day? You know, can you kind of take me through it? Yeah, I, it, you know, it wasn't nothing long. It wasn't long, but it was just Vaughn them. They moved to like the suburbs, and me, Balshan, and uh, Vaughn came to the block. Man, he got us. He scooped us up, and you know, he took us out to where he lived at. And I say it was one of the funnest days, Cam, because it wasn't nothing like the regular days we had on the block, the fighting. Uh, the, the 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 worrying about if somebody gonna come past, let some shots off. It was a day of peace, and I guess that that peace was fun to me, cause eventually me, y'all know what I do. I would eventually change my life and go seeking for that very peace, uh, that I felt in that moment. I wanted for my whole entire life. I wanted my kids to grow up in that, my family to grow up in that, my friends to experience that. But it was fun only because it was peaceful. You know, and, you know, I had to see Vaughn. I got a chance to see Vaughn. Vaughn was locked up for, like, I forget, but he used to get locked up when for those gun cases. And, um, you know, that, I think that was uh one of the times that he was he, he beat a murder trial. He beat the little murder case and whatnot. And so he was locked up for a long time at that, and at that point, man. And, and I love Vaughn. Like, Vaughn was somebody that, you know, he did what he did, you know, due to the lack of knowledge. But he had a heart of gold for those that he truly loved. He would. It wasn't no, no, no mouth. He wasn't willing to go to, to see you smile, bro. Like, and and that stuck with me from him. And it's like I know what he did, and it hurt me to say a lot of the truths about like, you know, him being to where I know he is, or you know, it's tough. You feel me? But that, just going back to your question, man. Yeah, that was one of the funnest days. It was peaceful, and we ain't had to worry about all that came. All the stuff that came with the block, we ain't got it. We ain't had to worry about those issues, man. It was a good day. It was a good, peaceful day that I got to see, you know, my brother. And, you know, it's something that's going to forever stick with me because we ain't had many peaceful days <laughs> like that. All our days was rooted in, boy, messing, messing somebody else's day up. When was the last time you talked to King Vaughn? Man, we was into it. We was fake into it, uh... Over something that my ex best friend, Lil Gooch, man, it was a, it was something that had transpired. Where Vaughn came to the block, he gave all that money out. Me and Balshan talked. We had a whole situation, pretty much, where um I told Gooch what Sean said, and got Sean Gooch ended up telling Vaughn what Sean said, and me not being around, I feel like they kind of tried to slip flipped the situation on me and made it seem like I was on some messy stuff when I, I me t opened up my mouth telling Gooch what Sean did was me being messy, but I wasn't thinking that Dante was going to go make it seem as though like, 
you know, Von did Sean dirty. When Von came and gave niggas money, he ain't get Sean no money. And Sean told me about it. And so I told Gooch, like, oh, yeah, folk, folks felt the way about when bro ain't give him no money and whatnot. And so me and Von was kind of like into it. Boy, we uh, we we was into it for a little bit. And he actually, uh, you know, we, we scratched it quick, though, because, like, that's... I know you, dude. I don't care how many bodies you think you got, nigga. I don't care if you think you can fight like that, nigga. I could fight like, and we brothers. It was deeper than that. Like, I know him, know him. You feel me? And so, I remember like, and my girl even say like, nigga, Von, um, he sent me a text message like, he called me a, he called me a bitch or something, and I'm, I'm like, nigga, what? He called me a bitch, said what he had do to me, and so I called that nigga like, fool. I don't care what a. That's the thing about me. And and if you always tell if, if 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 I speak on truth like right now like I don't care about what somebody will do to me, um, nigga when I was doing what I'm doing or in the mindset like you definitely couldn't check me or do no nothing and I wasn't in that state of mind then but I'm just saying this is who I am nigga can't I don't care about what no you bleed like I bleed so if some niggas bro you ain't talk to King Von like that like nigga he ain't no king for real he kings to y'all nigga that's Davon Bennett to me. He ain't King Von to me. That's Davon Bennett. And Sosa, Chief Keith, ain't no Chief Keith. That's Keith Kozart. You hear me? These are childhood friends that no idols to us, but they be become idols to niggas who don't know them. And I'm just saying that so niggas could actually understand that we don't look at them the same as y'all. I, how I think about them is not the same as y'all. I mean, these niggas are no idols. And even the people that ain't like them ain't no idols. I got one. And that's the man who, that's the spirit who created all. And we know what his name is. But, yeah, I, uh, um, really pretty much to just keep it at that, fool. We got into it. And we talked, we had a little conversation. And I kind of got into it with Louie, too. And I always fake wanted to beat Louie up just because what he did to one of my homies who, when we was young, long story. But, yeah, man, we we got over it pretty quick because when we got on the phone, I started, like, telling Von, like, boy, you know who I am. And we pretty much, like, it's so much love there. It's too much love there that we couldn't be mad at each other for real. We started laughing. And we pretty much just squashed it. And then, you know, we went on from there. I think we... Uh, I had added him on the uh, game to play GTA with him after that, but we never even get, like got to play on GTA. But I think I just was like, bro, what you doing? And he used to play the game a lot. Anybody that know Vaughn, he used to play the game a lot. That's how I'm a Patriot fan. Fool used to be playing a football game, and he used to play with the Patriots. But, yeah, that was like the last time I talked to him for real. And that was a little – he got killed. At the end of that year, man, and we ain't talked for some months leading up to his death. And I was just mad. I was angry, you know, that I ain't get to, you know, talk to him due to that. Oh, no, it wasn't even about the money, nigga. I cap it was about the old block chains. That's when we got into it. We got into it not about the money. We got into it about the old block chains. And then from there, we ain't even argue. That's the last time we kind of, niggas, they was just like hood hating because he ain't get a chain. And I'm in my head like, nigga, I don't went to college. I don't been on Sports Illustrated. Nigga, if realistically, I done did shit that y'all kids and nobody had never. This is just me being cocky in my own mind. And I'm just like, nigga, why would I want an old block chain? What does this chain service me other than making, putting a dot on a, a, a red X over me? And so I was mad at them thinking that I would even wear something like that. Nigga, I'm not a jewelry type dude. I don't cause more attention to me than what's already just going to be by natural, by default. And so I was kind of angry at them over that. We all kind of really got into it over that. Nigga, me, top, all us. I really had to check a lot of niggas. And I showed up in Chicago after that. And Von died after that. He died a little after that. And I showed up in Chicago after that. And niggas, niggas saw me see murder. Everybody saw me because one thing about me. I um, don't, bro, I'm, and me and Vaughn, we always melted together good like that because I'm principle based. Don't play with me. And I know niggas will kill this and kill that, but, bro, I, bro I, I, I'm a fighter. And, and I'm going to stand on my own team. Now nah, I ain't finna be so big because a lot of day, boy, these niggas will kill you. Nah, it ain't no love. Like, it ain't no love no more. But, you know, but I, I, I went over there and whatnot and, and you know, that's just another whole nother story or whatnot. But, yeah, it was the old block change that me and Vaughn kind of fell out about. We ain't talk no more. How did you hear about the news about him being shot? 
when I heard, I think, uh, man, I don't even know if I got a call. I think I saw it on the, um, like how everybody else saw, I think I saw it on like YouTube or just somebody posting it on one of them, you know, on one of them social medias. And then I just was like, kind of pretty much lost. Then it took me a few days to even watch the video. I ain't want to watch the video. But then when I watched the video, I was mad at the guys. And then further watching it, it just seemed, it just seemed like the whole moment was ordained for him to die. It seemed like they had something to do with it. Cause I know them, I grew up with them. There's never been a fight like that fight, how they had that led up to his death. We never had a fight where one person swing and then everybody else that's right there don't mob everybody else out. So when Vine stole off uh, Lil Tim and everybody ain't go in and beat up everybody that was with Lil Tim and around Lil Tim, in my head, I'm like, this is odd. And then Vine got shot in the way he did and then niggas was doing what they were doing. It's just a moment of confusion. But again, man, you live by the gun, you die by the gun. That's one thing I know. You know, at this point, I understood what I understood about God. And so when you die, in, you know, if he he done already died in this, no matter what had happened, man. And, you know, he he he, he signed in blood and he said it himself. He signed in blood. And and and, and so when you sign in blood, man, the, Satan on the rights to, to, to take you out when he want to take you out, how he want to take you out. You sign the blood, you sign that over to him. And, nigga, and that's just really truthfully what it was. So, you know, it was his time to go because. What he got himself involved in, and then, you know, what he done deal with his life, man. I love him to death, but the truth is the truth. You know, uh, one of the things that's kind of been in the news lately is, you know, Gucci Man's artist. A lot of his artists have been going to jail, or even recently, a big scar OD'd. You know, a dude named Critter Mac was arrested for murder. Pushaisi's doing five years for a shooting. Fujiano's doing five years. Uh, a dude named Robo Roboy is locked up. Rollo. You know, I don't think he was with Gucci no more, but at one point he was with Gucci. So, you know, a lot of these artists who originally signed with Gucci, you know, have came across a lot of bad luck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> duh. What do you think is going to come about when you are... See, the thing is, <laughs> like everybody is so, like blinded when we see what's going on. They are going to grab disturbed kids that live their life gang banging. These niggas rap about gang banging. They rap about killings. They rap about essentially their lifestyle. Their lifestyle is facilitated by all evil and it's what gets them rich. So it's kind of thinking like, they go to the, this is the image that they give off, right? So in order to keep getting paid and monetizing off the image, you got to continue to be like what they first discovered you like. A hood ass nigga. Like, let's just be quite frank. A savage, because that's what the, that we call it ourselves, right? Savages. We gangsters. We slimes. Niggas don't even know the meaning of these words. What is, what is a savage? A savage is... Someone who back in the later time in Roman time in the Roman Empire times who would fight that like all the rich people would be around in um what did in these stadium like things, the Coliseums and sap this is what they called them savages because they would fight to death. And look how it's translating over to we calling each other savages and niggas is literally portraying themselves like savages. They out there literally fighting to death do we see how words literally have power in them again like literally life and death lies between the tongue like it's literally that deep but again it's like the evil know that these dudes got a light satan know that these that judah we have a natural light just just period it was a blessing ordained from god and yeah we eventually would lose the light but of it's prophetic, it's prophecy that that light that we lost, we gonna gain again. And not only that, but we would go and make all other nations rich. When black, when people was enslaved, that's was making a nation rich. They was building nations, a longer story short, but 
you know, again, evil understands how they can use these people to not only shine light on evil, but to be looked at as a pillar of light of, for those who don't even know what evil is. But they see these dudes getting paid. They see them getting this. And so they go living their life and thinking that nigga, I could be just like a Chief Keef. I could be just like any other artist that Gucci signed. But the thing is, again, to really just uh, 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 dive, dive right into the, exactly. They know that these dudes would eventually go to jail or get killed. That's the lifestyle that they in. That is why they go sign these niggas. And what happens when they go to jail? Don't the numbers of the charts go up? What happens when they die? Don't the numbers on the charts go up? So it's kind of like an investment. And understand, Judah, which is you, what they call us, black men, we ain't black. Our nation, our tribe, Judah, of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they want people to die within that whole realm of, uh, of that life because they know people looking at them, but they already know that they speaking curses on themselves. So they just waiting for that curse that they speaking upon themselves to take effect because it's a spiritual law. Speak curse over your life. That curse will happen in the spiritual. Like that's why people don't see it because they don't die right off the bat, but you killing yourself spiritually speaking these curses into your life. But again, they know what they are doing. 50 Cent or Gucci might not know, but he is, they will use him to further like, you know, be dumb. It's the blind leading the blind, but they control. And again, they know when these people die or go to jail, it gives the, it, it bumps the revenue up. So why not, if I'm investing, go and get something that I know uh, because of the life that they built for themselves, one day they will be worth more to me than uh, dead than alive, period. Or in jail, then free. And they get nothing. I think you talked about before that at one point you went to school with Duck's brother or, or you know what I'm saying, you went to school with a couple of those dudes. You know, what was that like for you? Man, when I first went to Phillips, this was me really transitioning my life. So I really just gave my life to God. I was praying and all that. And But I obviously I was still heavily involved because I still stayed on the block. And then, man, so I almost... I almost one time, you know, uh, forgive me FBG fans, man, and this ain't me no more. It's the old me, but man, I almost got duck set up one time, and cause he's at a basket, his 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 brother named Will, he played basketball. I didn't, I ain't make no call, I ain't do no none of that. Like I fought it off, I ain't do no none of that. But um, his brother was on a basketball team, and I liked Will, but man, duck was duck was duck, man. You know where I'm from, and y'all know, like I was saying earlier, that he was a prized possession that. You know, people wanted him, and uh, in another word, they wanted his head on a silver platter type deal. And so, man, I almost got him set up. But um, you know, I seeing him at one of the games and, and and stuff like that. But I liked Will, his 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 brother. I liked Will, man, cool dude. He never once spoke on. He knew where I was from, but you know, he never once because he wasn't that type of dude. And when I went to Phillips, I I was letting that stuff go. Like, yeah, I'm from the block and. I wasn't really letting it go, like, because if you ask me where I'm from, oh, I'm from O Block, like, no doubt about it, like, what's up, like, you feel me? But I wasn't really trying to be about it, but obviously, I, if you try to press me on where I'm from, nigga, it's, it is what it is, and I ain't finna shy away from it. How are you gonna set them up? Oh, shit, just let them know, shit. All you gotta do is make a call at Duck. I'm at, a, I'm at the game with Duck, Duck at the game, and he's just that lollygagging around, like, you know, you basically, how he got killed the, the time he got killed, somebody dropped the location. But you know that 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 was uh what I was gonna do. But I like I ain't I ain't do it. I ain't do it. I ain't go. I ain't go along with it. I was just like man, shit. I was trying to do away with that lifestyle in itself anyway. What made you not do it? Cause I I was like you feel me. I was trying to do away with that lifestyle. Um, I was trying to become a better me. I was praying a lot. And, you know, it just didn't feel like the right thing to do, bro. Like, I know how big he was and things like that. But, and I felt like it was going to be, you know, I felt like, because I liked Will. And I genuinely liked his brother. So I felt like, man, that would have been a big backstabbing. That that man brother would have got killed. 
And really, it would have been because of me. And so, like, his hands would have been, his blood would have been on my hands. That was another thing that if they'd have killed him, like, they only did it because I gave them the drop. So, for that would have been like me killing them myself. So, you know, it was just the spirit allowing for me not to go where my flesh wanted me to go out of ignorance. What year, you know what year this was? 2014. So Duck, Duck was uh, a very hated person then. Hey, yeah, bro, you you ain't see the that that oh Ida is you serious with with FBD with with Duck and uh billionaire black? That's what started the real the the war with the music. Ida and them Ida dropping the uh F the other side and then Duck and um billionaire dropping the Ida is you serious? Them the two who really got that whole drill. You, that's what blew it all up. Niggas say Keith blew, no, Keith blew it up to globally, yes. But for Chicago, that's what started the movement. I ain't talking about drill uh, drill music. I ain't no Pac-Man, all them. Like, I'm talking about drill music where nigga, and, and he was talking about what he was talking about, but them niggas was the first to go at each other in diss songs and the disses was more deeper than just how like the famous people would do it where they really wasn't trying to, nigga, we was, they was really out there trying to kill each other making diss songs and it was real life war. So that's what made it different. But yeah, man, that, 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 that uh, um, I'm just speaking on that because, you know, like, yeah, Duck was a, a very, he was, yeah, Duck, Duck is Vaughn to, to his people. That Duck would be Vaughn to his people, you feel me? And Vaughn would be Duck to 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 us in a way. So what what all are you working on now? Man, honestly, man, my spirit lead in me, man. And if y'all don't know, I y'all can follow me at Came From Nothing Podcast. Cause there be a lot of people I see in the comments and they like, what bro got a podcast? Yes, I got a podcast. I'm being shadow banned. But uh really, Cam, I'm just I'm I'm really just working on Denying more of my flesh. This is it. This is the authentic me. I'm denying my flesh to take upon more of God's wisdom, more of his truth, to be able to pour it back into those who willing to accept it. That's really how I live my life. I live my life being a, a, a like a you know, a living sacrifice unto the most high man. I'm just trying to listen to his voice, listen to his wisdom. And um, shine light on darkness. That's what, you know, that's one thing that I went through all. I saw all those things, but I don't want to glorify none of it. I'm hoping that by what I'm doing with my words, it's, yeah, we're going to talk about certain things that might make, might be uneasy to talk about. and But we just showing all of the, uh, some of the ways in which we hurt, you know, some of the ways in which the curses that was, uh you know, prophesied on Mount, um, Sinai through Moses, how they are, you know, taking effect, not just taking effect, but how they are in effect. And so really, man, I'm just trying to pour myself out, you know, just with wisdom. So we all, not just my people, but peop your people, Cam, for uh, all people to really, you know, just to come into the love of the truth, man, because it's deeper than what we see, bro. There's so much stuff going on in this world. And if the Bible says this, Literally, and, and I hope everybody literally pay attention to this. It says, in all of their days does man see evil. But through all of the evil man see, it was never enough to them to even come to the Lord or even think about the Lord. And if evil is persistent, then you got to know good is persistent. If, and if that good is persistent, that will, who would be the creator of the good? Come on, it's, say it in the God. You know, I'm kind of trying to take y'all somewhere, but. That's the lifestyle I live. This is my life. Trying to teach people on the knowledge that he said two-thirds of all mankind would perish for. If he said two-thirds of all mankind would perish, and again, all man dies, literally all of us have a death date, time to be born, time to die, then we should be thinking about where we going when we do die. Everybody should be thinking about that. And if you don't, then that must mean that that verse, if because they believe not the love of the truth, I, God, will send them a strong delusion for them to believe a lie. And if you feel that way, you got a lot of praying to do and a lot of um, repenting and asking him for forgiveness because when you die, that's it. That's it. It ain't no more, it ain't no more nothing, bro. Yo, we don't know, they could, today could, tomorrow could be, today could be everybody last day and you won't wake up tomorrow. 
But by taking heed of this message today, accepting his love today can save you tomorrow. You feel me? Like, really, that's what, uh, you know, that's what I'm doing. But that's what I got in the works. His work. That's what I got in the work. Well, that's what's up, man. You know, it's uh, good to see you, you know, turn things around. Be positive. Try to do some positive, man. It's definitely a, a good thing, man. You know what I'm saying? That you're doing. Spreading the message, you know, positivity and, uh, you know, everything you got going, man. And it's just dope to see, man. I appreciate you. Hey, man, I appreciate you bringing me back on, man. Uh, we got to, we got to, um, and hey, y'all stop hating, man. Make sure y'all hit the like button and y'all share it. Share the videos, man, because it's, it ain't, I don't want the videos to be shared for me, but it's for us. It's the knowledge. It's, they don't want us to know who we all are, and it ain't just about who we gonna say black people, bro. This about everybody. Satan wants everybody in his teeth. He don't care the race. He don't care the uh the the, the gender. He don't care about any of that. He wants to devour all of us, and we gotta be more for us than we for evil. Are you for more for for living than you are for death? That's the question that I like to ask, man. So, but yeah, that'll be my last remarks, man. Thank you for bringing me on. You know, uh, as many times as you have, man. Look forward to working with you again if it's if it be in the wheel. Sounds good, man. Definitely, bro. For sure. Yes, man. All right, bro. Take care, man. All right, bro. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.